Geico presents Sharing versus Oversharing. Earlier this week, Claire Tippins shared a princess nickname generator, three pictures of her dog wearing a tutu, and two online quizzes, including what candy is your dream castle made of? Claire, your sharing has tipped the sugar scale and turned into oversharing. But have no fear, princess. Geico has something worth sharing with your internet kingdom, like how you could save hundreds on your car insurance just by visiting geico.com. No magic wand required. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Blog Talk Radio. This is True Capitalist Radio. True Capitalist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of business. Give him capitalism or give him death. That's it. Period. Broadcasting from his Skyline Office Studios in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, for Christ's sake. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the prognosticator of prognosticators... The man they call Ghost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's going on, folks? And thank you for tuning in with me to another edition of True Capitalist Radio. And of course. I am your host, the man they call Ghost, and once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. As you can tell, I'm still trying to get over this goddamn voice ailment that's been screwing me up for the past week, for Christ's sake. <clears throat> but uh, that aside, I'd like for everybody to realize that it's Taco Tuesday, baby! <laughs> that's right, Taco, Taco Tuesday. And not to mention, it's a fat taco Tuesday, on top of which uh, all those damn uh, hedonistic Neanderthals out there in freaking Mardi Gras are out there acting like a bunch of sexual deviant perverts right now. Not to mention, out at Mardi Gras, but at Carnival, out there in freaking Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, uh, and we already alluded to what the hell goes on over there, for Christ's sake, it's disgraceful. I mean, I'm serious. If you don't know, I I find it funny that the damn media is plugging this disgusting, despicable uh, orgy that's happening in the middle of the streets of Rio de Janeiro, for Christ's sake. I mean, I'm seeing it all over the mainstream media as if, you know, they're trying to enhance or or entice tourism or some crap. Jesus Christ. It's sick, man. It's sick. You go out there, there's people just, you know, getting in where they fit in, for Christ's sake. There's bisexuality, there's trisexuality, there's all kinds of crap all over the streets. It's in the middle of the street, man! Jesus Christ, good Lord. Anyway, folks, before we get into any, anything else, I'd like for everybody to uh, please retweet the broadcast, all right? Go to the social networks. Go to the forums, go to the blogs, and spread around like wildfire. And before we get into anything else, I'd like to remind everybody that this is episode number 211. 211 episodes of the True Capitalist Radio have gone by. And of course, for all you fat jelly-ass bastards that are too lazy to open up a freaking separate window in your browser, we got all kinds of little buttons underneath the player right there, right? We got Google Plus buttons, we got Facebook Like buttons, we got Retweet This buttons, we got Share This buttons, Email This buttons. Use and abuse those freaking buttons, baby, all right? It's just a freaking click, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. Anyway, now that we've gotten that out of the way, as you can see, we do have the chat room open for all the folks that were pissing and moaning. I mean, good God. I mean, I've never had so many freaking tweets and emails and all kinds of crap. Ghost, please open up the chat room, please. Good God. My life is completely insignificant without it, Ghost, please. God, please. So we're going to try this one more time, all right? That's what we're going to do. We're going to tiptoe into this 
chat room experiment one more time, and we're going to see how this works, all right? So I'm sorry for all the folks that wanted me not to have a chat open because it would crash their freaking computers and, you know, freaking uh, spam holics, text chat warriors, a bunch of fruit bowls up in here. I'm sorry, but we're, we're just going to try this one more time, and hopefully it works. You understand? Hopefully it works, for Christ's sake. God damn it. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started with the show, shall we? I know we had a bad show yesterday, folks, and I want to extend my sincerest apologies to everybody who had to hear that show, for Christ's sake. I mean, you know, uh, it's a long story. I don't want to get into it. We're not going to have those technical difficulties today. All right, so um, let's just go ahead and brush that into the past, shall we? Let's brush that into the past, and let's move into the future, and let's get into the markets right now. (laughs) And the reason I'm smiling is because, first of all, the volatility. I mean, oh, my God, if you were a day trader today, the volatility was there for you to make major liquidity, all right? Major liquidity, for Christ's sake. And uh, not to mention that if you had any kind of interest in the market, you saw at least modest gains today. We actually touched 13,000 Dow Jones Industrials, and then everybody decided to sell off as uh, later in the day as the damn closing of the day session began to approach. I, I have no freaking idea, for Christ's sake. What the hell is the investor sentiment behind this crap? Jesus Christ, but uh, with that said, we did still touch 13,000, all right, and the reason everybody is uh, <clears throat> pulling back is because, let's be honest, they're cashing out, I mean, there's still a run on the dollar, there's still a run on the dollar, I mean, look at the goddamn bonds, for Christ's sake, I mean, it's all this destabilization in freaking Europe, you know, I mean, right now they're negotiating, the EU is negotiating with Greece, on this freaking bailout, which is a second bailout, mind you. And before they even agree to the second bailout, you've got these goddamn guys in Greece already anticipating a third bailout. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, didn't these people see Wall Street too? I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Can we please send videos of Wall Street too out there to the EU and Greece and maybe they'll learn something for Christ's sake? Jesus Christ. Anyway, everybody's abandoning ship. Everybody's trying to go, and like I said, there's a run on the dollar. There's going to be a short-term run on the dollar, uh, which is going to continue to create this volatility that we're seeing here in the markets, for Christ's sake. I mean, we're touching 13,000 uh, Dow Jones Industrials. Now we're, you know, at the end of the day, all of a sudden, we start selling off. And the reason they're selling off is because the dollar is worth more. You know, whenever the dollar's worth more, everybody wants to, you know, cash out, man, and want to take some profits. You know what I mean? Anyway, let me go ahead and uh, get with the markets, folks. All right, the Dow Jones Industrials, like I said, we touched 13,000. It went back down. It it, it literally closed out uh, on modest positive numbers. I mean, it should have been a lot higher than this, but modest positive numbers. It is up 15.82 points, a percentage increase of point. 1-2%, closing out the Dow Jones Industrials at 12,965.70 points for the Dow Jones Industrials. We've got the S&P 500 up modestly, 0.98 points, a percentage increase of 0.0%, closing out the S&P 500 at 1,362.21 points for the S&P 500. We've got the NASDAQ. It is down today, believe it or not. Like I said, I mean, what have I told you about the NASDAQ? High risk, high reward. And let me tell you, as it started climbing down, as the the end-of-the-day session started uh, getting that much closer, we started seeing the major sell-offs coming in the NASDAQ, for Christ's sake. Anyway, it is down today 3.21 points. It's a modest decrease, but still a decrease. A uh, percentage decrease of 0.11%, closing out the NASDAQ at 2,948.57 points for the NASDAQ composite. Now, let's get to the European markets, because as I've said, folks, I mean, you know, once we are supposedly uh, trying to close this stupid episode with Greece, something happens within the bureaucratic channels of freaking negotiation, and we're back to square one, all right? I mean, it's just... 
It's time and time again. It's freaking Groundhog Day with these people. I mean, hey, EU, we've already factored in the fact that, you know, potentially there could be a default with Greece, all right? Stop kicking the can down the road, EU, and just go out and say, uh, you know what, you stupid Greeks, you're all a bunch of ungrateful bastards, so just go out there. And go do what you do. We're going to go do our own thing over here in the EU, you bastard. Do you understand? I mean, enough. Enough of trying to kick the goddamn can down the road with these Greeks, all right? We have already factored in a potential default. In my opinion, we've already factored in. The market's factored in a potential default with Greece. I think that what they need to do is worry about uh, other key members of the EU at this point in time. And I'm talking about uh, Italy, I'm talking about Portugal, I'm talking about Spain, I'm talking about these countries, Ireland. Forget about Greece. These people are a bunch of ungrateful jerks, man. Let them go do what the hell they want to do out there. Who cares? Who the hell cares? Jesus Christ. Oh, and look at these assholes. You see, this is why I don't like the freaking chat room. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying, engineer? You see what I'm talking about? You see what I'm saying? They're saying I'm insulting British people now because of my freaking uh, accent that I just put there. I mean, just come on, all right? You politically correct liberal jerk dicks, all right? Come on! Stupid moron sitting over here. Go shove it up your ass. All you people that are sitting here, oh, I'm offending you. Yeah, shove it up your ass, all right? I don't care if you're offended, all right? Just take it, like it, and eat it! You stupid moron, God damn you. See, you're already pissing me off. We're not even in, t- we're not even over ten minutes here. And you people are pissing me off already, for Christ's sake. Look at this crap. I, kn- I knew I shouldn't have opened up the chat room, God damn sh- Freaking. You know what I need? I need a drink right now. This is what I need. Give me a drink. Give me a damn drink. Jesus Christ, give me a freaking drink. Good stuff right there, of course. I'm drinking some Johnny Walker Blue Label. Oh, yeah. And, of course, uh, I'm drinking scotch, which is from, uh, well, Scotland. And uh, Scotland is actually trying to win its independence, believe it or not. You know what I mean? I mean, Jesus Christ. Anyway, let me let me let me go on. I don't even know what I'm talking. I'm, I've been having a few. I'm sorry. All right, I've had a great day on the markets. All right. Anyway, let's get to the European brethren. All right, the FTSE 100 is down today because of all this freaking European Union crap. It is down. 17.05 points, a percentage decrease of 0.29%, closing out the FTSE 100 at 5,928.20 points for the goddamn FTSE 100. And, of course, that's for our European brethren across the pond out there in the U.K. Uh, let's go ahead and get to the DAX. Of course, the DAX index is for our German brethren. Volkswagen, Volkswagen, Volkswagen. The DAX is down also today, 40.07 points, a percentage decrease of 0.58%, closing out the DAX at 6,908.18 points for the DAX index, for Christ's sake. I mean, like I said, whenever you see this disarray happening uh, with the EU as it's negotiating with these goddamn freaking Greeks, you know, trying to tell these Greeks, look, okay, you you just have to pay the bondholders 53%. That's it. Just pay the bondholders that invested in your economy the 53% of the worth of the bond, and we'll bail you out, all right? But no, they can't even do that. And you want to know why they can't do it? Because it comes with preconditions. It comes with preconditions of this. They want to make sure that Greece can at least pay back some of the garbage uh, bailouts that the EU has given these people. And the only way that they're going to be doing that is if they have actual austerity measures, you know, cutting the books as far as government expenditures are concerned. But you see, they don't want to do that. 
Do you understand? They don't want to go back to work. This is socialism imploding here in Europe. And these people don't want to face up to it. They don't want to smell the coffee. They don't want to face up to reality, for Christ's sake. Instead, they want to throw Molotov cocktails at freaking cops. Uh, they want to set buildings on fire. Give me a freaking break. I mean, it's a disgrace. You know, the, the people out there in Greece are acting like a complete and utter, uncivil, primitive disgrace. You understand that? And you can tell any Greek I said that. You know who I, You know who my favorite Greek was? Old Jimmy the Greek. Huh? Yeah, that was my favorite Greek. Whatever happened to Greeks like that? Old Jimmy the Greek. Huh? Went out there and, and, and made his living getting some gambling going on out there. Huh? He was a freaking professional gambler. Old Jimmy the Greek, man. Whatever happened to Greeks like that? Huh? I mean, what about, uh, what was it? That broad on uh, Fox Business, uh, Petalides. Huh? Why don't we get more Greeks like that walking around out here, you know? Nicole Petalides is her name. For you folks that don't know who the hell Nicole Petalides is, well, maybe you should start looking for more women like this, all right? That are not just, uh, you know, a tad bit attractive, but at the same time got something going on for themselves upstairs, you understand? understands, uh, you know, finance or is, has some sort of intellectual curiosity, for Christ's sake. And, uh, you know, I don't know where these Greeks are coming. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to get off keister here, all right? I mean, you know, I'm just trying to find some significance that, uh, you know, the Greeks have contributed outside things that they did like 2,000 years ago or 1,500 years ago, whatever the hell it was, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ, and look at people, I'm offended by this, frankly. I'm listening to this, and I'm a first-time listener, and I'm offended. Well, shove it up your ass if you're offended. I don't care if you're offended, you stupid moron. I'm offended that the Greeks can't wake up and smell the coffee and say, I, we're not going to be able to afford our socialism anymore, we can't do it. We we can't party anymore. We can't do it. We can't do the opa. We can't do it anymore. Shut up. Jesus Christ. I don't care if you're offended. Shove it up your ass if you're offended. Let me get to the damn commodity, shall we? I knew this was a bad idea. I knew this was a goddamn bad idea uh, for for these goddamn people to be in this chat room. I knew it. I knew it. Anyway, let's get to the energy sector, because let me tell you, the commodities markets were spiking. The commodities markets were spiking, and as I've said, the reason that we're seeing an increase in energy costs is because, let's be honest, baby, everybody in the international community is increasing their demand, while the United States is decreasing their demand. And people are like, well, wait a minute. Uh, don't you think that decreasing our demand ghost would uh, actually decrease the price in gasoline and decrease the price in energy costs? No. Because, you see, what Americans don't understand is the reason that we were so, I, I, I don't know, blessed with low gasoline prices is because we bought in large quantities. You know, we had the gas guzzlers. Remember those? Uh, the freaking uh, huge, uh, although I love them, believe me, uh, the freaking Escalades, you know, and the, and the trucks, you know, and these big-ass gas guzzlers, for Christ's sake. Believe it or not, uh, we're not consuming gasoline like that anymore. And, you see, that was a precondition for a lot of the people that were out here exclusively dealing with us as consumers, is that we got a premium rate because we bought in large quantities. But now that we're receding from our demand in gasoline, now that we're receding from our demand in uh, energy, all of a sudden our refiners, okay, and I'm talking about the people that, you see, you, see, you people don't understand the process of how crude oil gets from crude into gasoline. You see, people like Exxon, People like uh, BP, people like these uh, gasoline companies, these people actually have to go and buy the majority of their oil on the world market. All right? They buy the oil off the world market, they get it shipped in, and they have to refine that oil into gasoline. 
And that refining process is really what makes the crux of the business model of the majority of the gas and oil companies, for Christ's sake. All right, yeah, get oil. They buy oil in the world market, Dev. All right, wake up. If you're primitive to the idea of how oil comes from the ground from drillers and then, you know, it goes out and sold on the world market, well, then just get the hell out of here. But, yeah, you know, believe it or not, uh, you know, our refiners take this oil and refine it, all right? And now that we're no longer buying gasoline at the mass quantities that we used to, well, our refiners aren't selling to us out here as consumers because there's not much money. We've receded our demand. Remember, the money that was made with the United States consumer as it related to gasoline was in quantity, quantity that means in mass quantitative numbers for christ's sake well now that we've receded our demand what's happening well the refiners are now going to the world market and selling the gasoline at the world market for a higher rate because everybody else is increasing their demand for gasoline believe it or not believe it or not folks i know i know it's hard for people to believe for christ's sake and, you know, this Keystone Pipeline that everybody keeps uh, bitching about, whether they're for or against, this would have definitely put a uh, uh, a dent uh, in that, uh, you know, particular reasoning behind refiners selling their go- gasoline on the world market. I mean, that that literally, that Keystone Pipeline would have just completely eliminated that. Because, you see, the Canadians would have sold us their oil, they would have pumped it down this Keystone Pipeline to all the refiners, they wouldn't even have to go out to freaking Saudi Arabia, they wouldn't have to go out to all these other oil producers on OPEC and in the international community to go out there and get their oil. They'd get it right from the Canadians, for Christ's sake. But because we got a bunch of environmental jerk dicks that got nothing to do because they're collecting EBT and other goddamn government entitlements, and they have enough money to belong to these stupid, dumb, environment, environmental, non-profit freaking organizations, for Christ's sake, they had enough clout, and they went out there and protested enough to actually have this president table. I mean, he didn't just completely reject the Keystone Pipeline, but he has tabled this until after the election. And the Canadians, what are they doing? They're not out here just sitting around. Are you kidding me? They're going to start building the pipeline towards Asia because that's where the demand is, baby. I mean, that's where the demand is. I mean, look at the growth in Asia. You know, I I keep telling people, if you don't believe me, why don't you do a YouTube search for Beijing, China, in like 1991, 1990, all right? And take a look at how many people were riding around in bikes and how primitive it looked, for Christ's sake, all right? Now... Why don't you do a YouTube search for Beijing, China, 2012, and take a look at the vast contrast, all right? Take a look at the vast contrast there. And not just that. I'm just, I'm not just, I'm just using China as an example. I mean, there is extreme go, growth go, going on in South Korea. South Korea is exploding with economic growth. Uh, Japan is bouncing back since its unfortunate natural disaster incidents. Singapore is another, uh, you know, Asian country that's it's just, it's just nothing but economic productivity happening in freaking Asia. And look at us over here. Look at us. We can't even buy our gasoline to fuel our gas guzzlers. Anyway, this is why we're seeing increases in energy because it sure as hell is not the fact that. Uh, the, the saber rattling that's happening in Iran, all right? The investors have already, you know, factored that into the market. Uh, it's the fact that the numbers prove that America is not consuming gasoline at the numbers that uh, have been traditionally been expected of the United States consumer. So anyway, let's just get to the energy uh, prices so you can understand what I'm talking about, all right? We got Brent crude futures, and of course, for all you ass clowns that don't know what Brent crude futures are, uh, they're the uh, Brent crude is the oil that shipped off to Europe and Asia. It is up today a dollar and two cents, a percentage increase of 0.85 percent, closing out Brent crude at 121 dollars and seven cents per barrel of Brent crude oil. 
All right. We've got gasoline futures up five bucks, a percentage increase of point four nine percent. We got heating oil up four dollars and thirty one cents. Good God, an increase of one point three five percent for freaking heating oil. Uh, people still selling off, taking their profits in natural gas. Natural gas is down three cents, a percentage decrease of one point three zero percent. And good God, did you see WTI Sweet Crude, for Christ's sake, huh? Did you see WTI Sweet Crude? What have I told you? You know what I mean? What have I told you about the petroleum spiking about a month ago, two months ago, for Christ's sake? Do you remember that? I mean, I hope that you entertained that analysis, and I hope that you invested accordingly, because if you didn't, you lost out on some major freaking money, baby. You lost out on some major, major freaking money, baby. That's all I'm saying. And let me tell you, there are some people that uh, took heed to that, what I said about the oil markets and the energy sector, and they actually went out and invested accordingly, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? I mean, I got them tweeting me up saying, hey, dollar, dollar bill, y'all. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. I'm serious, man. They were making serious money, and not just in oil, but in other commodities that uh, I've prognosticated. And I want to say cheers to those capitalists. You understand? Cheers. Uh, ch- uh, absolutely. All right? Cheers. Uh, I really hope that uh, you made so much money that you could start freaking drinking bottles of Johnny Walker Blue Label like it ain't crap. Uh, but WTI took a big spike today, a big, huge spike. It is up $2.32, a percentage increase of 2.24% on the day. I mean, good God. What did I tell you at the beginning of yesterday's show before the goddamn microphone started crapping out? I started saying, observe the price of gasoline in your local area and then check it the next day. And I told you that we were going to continue to see increases in the price of gasoline, baby. Ten to fifteen cents increase. All right? That's why I keep saying, folks, you better be prepared for this. What I strongly advise you to do, and and there's actually been some people out there who listen that have actually done this. Go out there and fill up your gas tank, all right? And every time you use your vehicle... You need to top that son of a bitch off, all right? You need to go out there, even if you're just pumping one gallon or two gallons back, just so that you can top it back off, all right? I mean, that'll keep you ahead of the gasoline game. Because you've got to remember, all right, you're filling up at a lower rate. If you're going to see increases in gasoline, 10 or 15 cents a day for who the hell knows when this trend is going to stop, well, you want to stay on top of the game as it relates to, uh, you know, paying for petroleum. All right? So that's why I'm saying, and moreover, I think that this is going to throw a wrench in the goddamn uh, budding growth that we're having here in America. I think it's going to throw a wrench in our economy. Really, really, really freaking bad, man. I'm not not joking. This is not a joke. Jesus Christ. And everything's looking good, though. I mean, take a look at the numbers today in the stocks. I mean, you know, earnings are good. I mean, Macy's beat expectations by a dramatic amount, for Christ's sake. Home Depot, better than expected earnings, for Christ's sake. So we are seeing all the things that I prognosticated here. And believe it or not, I actually believe that we're going to see an increase in the stock market uh, in the short term. I'm talking at least 12, 15 percent uh, here in the first quarter. I'm not joking. At least maybe it'll extend into the second quarter. But I believe that we are going to see a dramatic increase. So right now, I am bullish, all right? Right now, I am completely bullish on the equities market in America. And if I were you, I would go out there and start looking at some plays, some opportunities out here, because let me tell you, you're going to start seeing a ride upward. Now, it's only going to be short term, because once these damn gas prices go up, and they start, uh, you know, affecting the markets, they will start, uh, you know, showing up a, maybe a quarter or two from now, and that's when we're going to start seeing a complete and utter downturn in the equities market. All right, we're going to see a retraction. I wouldn't say a downturn, but we're going to see a definite retraction. So keep that in mind, folks, all right? 
Another prognostication, baby. Another prognostication on episode 211. I am an insanely bullish in the equities market here for the short term. And I'm talking up until about the summertime. You know, maybe uh, mid-summer time, we are going to see some major increases in the equities market. And I think that everybody should start entertaining some plays, for Christ's sake, all right? Straight up, all right? I'm not joking. Start entertaining some plays here because I'm going to prognosticate. Now that we've already touched 13,000 Dow Jones Industrial, I'm thinking that we could see 14,200. 14,200 by the end of spring, all right, by, by, by June time, all right, and maybe even sooner than that. So in my personal opinion, I am, I am bullish in the short term for equities. Now, once again, once we start seeing these bullish trends upward, we're going to start seeing a correction. And the reason is, is because the, these goddamn increase in gasoline prices are going to affect the market. And it's going to be a freaking wrench in there, for Christ's sake. It's going to be a freaking wrench in the goddamn budding growth that we're seeing out here. I mean, just look at the economic numbers right now. This is why I'm stating I'm bullish uh, in the short term. Take a look at the goddamn numbers, all right? We've got uh, housing bouncing back subtly, all right? We've got the good employment numbers that came out this week, uh, the unemployment numbers that came out. we got uh, decent data uh, as far as, uh, you know, uh, retail data is concerned. All right, I mean, we, we got a lot of things going on. We got earnings that are reflecting the the fact that uh, we grew in the last quarter, fiscal year 2011, fourth quarter. All right. So let me tell you something right now. If you want some money in the short term, I'm telling you this right now. From now until about May, going into June, maybe halfway through June, possibly going into July. But I'm not. I'm not. Focusing in after after that, I think we're going to have a correction before then. But uh, this market's rather screwy, you know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you this right now: we are witnessing a bullish ride here. It's going to be a short-term ride. And I hope that you're I hope that you're on board, baby. I hope that you're on board. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, I lost train of thought. But where the hell am I at, engineer? God damn it! Oh, that's right. Uh, WTI Sweet Crude, folks, $105.92 per barrel of WTI Sweet Crude, all right? Uh, we've got canola futures up. All right, we're getting to agriculture now, my bad. Agriculture futures. we got canola up $4.10, a percentage increase of 0.74%. And good God, did y'all see the cocoa futures? What did I say, baby? What did I say? Around Valentine's Day, we start seeing spikes. It extends into the freaking Mother's Day. It extends into the freaking Easter, so on and so forth. And look at what's going on here. Do you see what's going on? Coco up 79 bucks, a percentage increase of, get this, 3.37% on the day. I mean, good God. <laughs> Woo! I hope that y'all got on board with some ETFs. I mean, that was the easiest way to play the cocoa increase. I sincerely hope that you did. All right? I sincerely hope. Uh, maybe you didn't. Maybe you were playing with your pecker shaft. I don't know. But, well, it cost you money. All right? That's what that's what happens here when you're a stagnating piece of trash. Anyway, let's get to the other futures, for Christ's sake. I just want to toot my own horn with that cocoa play, because I've been calling it for, like, freaking, what, two, three months, for Christ's sake? I mean, I don't mean to be tooting my own horn here, but beep, beep. And as I've always said, if you don't toot your own horn, nobody's going to toot it for you. I mean, unless you find some broad that's, you know, going to be, uh, never mind. Anyway, let's just continue going, all right? We've got coffee futures, and, of course, this goes out to all you jerk dicks that make an excuse for being assholes in the morning by saying, Hey, dude, just just don't talk to me. Just don't talk to me, dude, unless I have my coffee, dude. Just don't, just don't, you know what I mean? Yeah, this goes out to you dicks, because I don't care about the coffee prices. I mean, first of all, I don't invest in that particular sector, and secondly, I don't drink it. I don't need to drink it, for Christ's sake, man. I'm naturally energized, for Christ's sake. I'm naturally vigorated. 
And you want to know what keeps me energized? The love of the money, baby. That's right. And not only just the money. I mean, because I like obtaining revenue, but I like converting revenue into capital. That's what I do. That's what keeps me fueled, for Christ's sake. I don't need no freaking coffee. Hey, look, here we go again. Here we go. Jesus Christ, with a stupid un-American, stupid scrolls, for Christ's sake. You idiots. I don't know how many times I've got to say this. You idiots that are calling me un-American for not drinking coffee. God damn it. Coffee isn't even made in America. I mean, Jesus, get edumacated, will you? Jesus Christ. It's made by some freaking Mexican out there in South America with for this donkey and his sombrero. You know, his name Juan Valdez, for Christ's sake. Don't be sitting over here saying that, oh, you're an American for not drinking coffee, ghost. Just shut up. Just sit there and shut your mouth. Anyway, where the hell am I at? These idiots are getting on my... Where am I at, engineer? All right, we are... Where are we at? Cotton, that's right. Cotton futures for all you ass clowns. Cotton is up 32 cents, a percentage increase of 3... Oh, excuse me, 0.35%. Jesus Christ. Uh, we've got uh, wheat futures down $11.50. That's a percentage decrease of 1.63%. Sugar is up $0.70. Cents. That's a percentage increase of 2.94% on the day for sugar. We've got soybean futures up $3.25. Lumber selling off because we've seen some major increases within the past several days. Lumber is selling off down $3.50. A percentage decrease of 1.27% on the day. Oat futures are down $3. That's a percentage decrease of 0.94% on the day. And we've got soybean oil futures up $0.65. Cents. And by God, wool. Wool is down. It looks like the bull-nosed bull dykes did not come out to see if there was any fresh-cut pieces of wool. Because wool futures, actually, they're not down. They're unchanged. They are unchanged today. That's what they're doing. So I guess, uh, you know, maybe Rosie O'Donnell and uh, you know, Queen Latifah and, you know, Beak-Faced Ellen DeGeneres went out there and saw some wool, but they didn't get anything for themselves. So anyway, they're unchanged today. Now, let's get to the big winners, shall we? Let's get to the big winners. Let's go to the medals, shall we? The medals. Let's get to the goddamn medals. That's right, folks, because if you were holding any kind of, whether it's hard asset or uh, you were making plays uh, on metals via stocks, ETFs, uh, mutual fund, whatever the case might be, these freaking metals are just going up the freaking roof, baby. <laughs> and, you know, they're going to continue to do so because we heard a couple of weeks ago from the Federal Reserve that they are seriously considering a quantitative easing three, and when they officially announce that, you better watch these metals go spiking through the roof on top of the equities also, given another spike. So um, I'm just saying, if you hadn't gotten on board this wave, I'm telling you, get your goddamn surfboard and... <laughs> Ride that wave, baby. Ride that goddamn wave. That's what I'm talking about. Ride that freaking wave, baby. Let's get to copper, all right? We saw copper posting gains yesterday. Well, let me tell you something right now. It is up today again. $11.60, a percentage increase of 3.12% on the day. I mean, good God. Good God. I mean, Jesus Christ, I, mean, I, I know that we got a lot of copper investors out here. I'm sure they're jumping for joy, for Christ's sake. I'm sure they're jumping for joy. And uh, let me tell you something, that trend looks like it's going to continue on the upward. I mean, and not just for copper. Let's get to gold, for Christ's sake, shall we? Did anybody see gold? Oh, my God. Gold up $35.20 today, a percentage increase of 2.04% on the day. Closing out gold at $1,761.10 per troy ounce of gold, baby. 
And that's just the way it is. <laughs> Woo! Oh, my God, man. I hope that you bought some gold. But let me tell you, I was, as much as I was bullish on gold, I was insanely bullish. I've been insanely bullish on silver for the past several months. And I've been telling everybody who's been listening to me out there off the Internet that it is time for you to get off the sidelines and get in the front lines and start getting into this freaking gold spike, for Christ's sake. I sincerely hope that you did, and you can play it any way you want to. Start accumulating silver, get scrap silver, start accumulating silver coins. Remember, folks, all American coinage before 1964, I'm talking about quarters, I'm talking about half dollars, I'm talking about silver dollars, I'm talking about dimes, they were 90% silver, for Christ's sake. And for you folks that are unaware of the meltdown, uh, what is it, the meltdown price of what these coins are worth, I'd like for you to go to a place called Coinflation.com. Coinflation. Coinflation. C-O-I-N-F-L. Uh, a. Uh, Jesus Christ, uh, A-T-I-O-N, Jesus Christ, I'm sorry, man, I'm doing like 80 different things here, for Christ's sake, because the freaking engineer's sitting here, what are you doing? I'm doing your job here, for Christ's sake, I'm doing your job! And shut up, just stop crying. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, folks, all right? Coinflation.com, all right? Just coinfreakinflation.com. Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm sorry, all right? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm doing 80 different things here. Are, are you okay now? Are you having a problem? Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, man. And screw you people telling me to stop yelling at the engineer. If the man's not doing his job and I'm paying him, I can yell at him whatever the hell I want. That's the thing about being able to employ people, all right? When you're when you're paying somebody and they're not doing the job, you better get in their face. You better get in their face. But, of course, if they're doing their job, I mean, you know, what, what different? You, you don't want to bother them. Let them do their job. Jesus Christ. Anyway, you go to coinflation.com, you can see the melt value. And that's just the, the value of the metal if you melt down the money. But if you take a look and do a little bit more research, you'll find that uh, each individual coin, pre-1964, believe it or not, all right, are also worth money in the coin market. Believe it or not, you actually have a coin market out here of a bunch of coin dorks and no offense to you coin collectors out there. I'm not, I don't mean that in a uh, I don't mean that in a derogatory ma manner. Believe me. I mean, I'm just saying these coin dorks know everything about coins for Christ's sake. But believe it or not, they create the market. They create the market and they increase the price of of the freaking coin beyond the melt value into a higher uh different price based on supply and demand. So, however you're playing the silver play, by all means, I've been saying to get on that freaking surfboard and ride it, baby. All right? Ride it. Because did you see goddamn silver? Huh? I mean, I've been telling people that I've been insanely bullish on silver for the past, like, three freaking months. All right? And I hope that you've been listening to me instead of counting the dingleberries in your ass hairs. I hope that you are actually listening and actually entertain some of these freaking silver plays, for Christ's sake. You know what I'm saying? I'm serious. I hope that you weren't just sitting there putting a goddamn couple of fingers up your shit funnel, hoping that some freaking money would just come out of your lap like freaking, op freaking osmosis. Excuse me. I didn't mean to curse. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. I'm cursing up here. I'm sorry. My, my apologies, all right? My my apologies, folks. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. I'm I'm just I'm pissed. Anyway, did you see silver? All right. I mean, but I mean, aside from the curse and aside from me going off keister, did you see silver? For Christ's sake, silver is up one dollar and eleven cents, a percentage increase of 
3.34% on the day. I mean, good God. Silver closing out at $34.39 per troy ounce of silver, baby. Oh, my God. Can you say it? Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. <laughs> I mean, if you would have just bought silver yesterday, today you'd be up 3.34% on your goddamn money, baby. Woo! <laughs> I mean, making money, baby. That's what I do. <laughs> oh, my God. This is great. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and take a swig of this. Oh. Oh, this is great. I'm telling you, this is really great. <laughs> I love making money, baby. I mean, it's a Taco Tuesday. This is a fat Taco Taco Tuesday. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I feel like doing some freaking for Lorico from all the money that I'm freaking making out here in the markets, for Christ's sake, all right? That's what I feel like doing. I feel like doing some freaking for Lorico, for Christ's sake. Hey, engineer, do you got some freaking Mexican music queued up? Well, just put it on, for Christ's sake. I want to do some freaking for Lorico, all right? Let's see if he puts it on. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Woo! That's right, baby. I'm feeling great on this Taco Tuesday, baby. I hope that you're making lots of money, because I sure as hell am on this Taco Tuesday. I want everybody to yelp with me. Do a Mexican yell with me. <laughs> That's right. Let me go ahead and do some four Lorico up in this joint. Now, let me go ahead and do some four Lorico. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Listen. Do you all hear me? I'm stomping my feet. I'm doing for Lorico. Listen. I'm doing for Lorico. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is a great Taco Tuesday. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, good God. I'm, I'm out of breath after doing some for Lorico. <laughs> Oh, man, all I need is a bottle of tequila and a freaking sombrero, baby. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Woo! Oh, my God. Look, I love this music, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? I could just mention a couple of mariachis. You know what I mean? With a whole garb, you know what I mean? Just, you know, playing their, you know... Like, I'm eating a Mexican taco, you know, at a restaurant, a couple of mariachis come in. Can I have some, senor? I'll give you a song. Here, let me go ahead. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, man, I'm running out of breath. I can't do four Lorico anymore. Oh, my God. Hey, I'm not racist. I'm not racist. I am the king of Mexicans. I'm the king of Mexicans. I'm not racist. Screw all you people that are saying I'm racist. You son of a bitch. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I'm going. I'm off keister for Christ. <laughs> uh, man, I'm sorry. I was doing four Lorico, man. I was really getting into those foot stomps, for Christ's sake, man. I was lifting my feet. Did you see me, engineer? I mean, I was getting, I was getting some freaking jump for Christ. I was getting air. Did you see it? I was getting freaking air out here. Oh my God. Oh, excuse me, folks. Let's get back to the markets for Christ's sake. I was just getting excited, man, from all the freaking gains that I've been making here, especially uh, in the insanely bullish prognostication of silver. <sighs> Oh my God! I'm sorry. I, I'm just. I'm, I was just doing for Lorico, for Christ's sake! God damn it! These people are giving me crap up in here because I'm breathing hard because I just did some for Lorico. Why don't you idiots do some for Lorico? All right, you jerks! You stupid freaking! Shut up your ass! All right. 
Shove it up your ass. I'm not a freaking ham bone. Shove it up your ass. Anyway, let me get back to the last part of the markets for Christ's sake. All right, livestock, all right? All right, live cattle futures are up a quarter, a percentage increase of 0.19%. Cattle feeder futures are up a dime. That's a percentage increase of 0.06%. And, of course, for all you fat, jelly ass, hambones that like to shove a couple of hambones down your goddamn gullet, well, by God, lean hog futures are down today, 55 cents, a percentage decrease of 0.61%, and by God, that, my friends, is the markets for your ass. <laughs> Woo! Oh, man, I'm telling you, I'm feeling good today, baby. I'm feeling, I'm giddy! I'm giddy today. I don't know what it is. I'm giddy. Uh, I guess it must be all the capital that I have made on today's markets, for Christ's sake, both in day trading and at the same time in uh, the actual long-term investments that I've got going on, for Christ's sake. Uh, but as I've stated, folks, uh, we are going to see a short-term spike in equities and it's going to, it's starting now, in my opinion. It is starting now, and it's probably going to continue on until about May, June time. And uh, we could see here 14,200 in the Dow Jones Industrials. I'm not joking. I mean, we are about to see a major bullish spike. And if I were everybody, I'd start entertaining some plays now. And uh, once that uh, limit that I just put about May or June, once that limit starts approaching, uh, you need to start uh, entertaining whether or not you should stay in, cash out, whatever the case might be, because we are definitely going to see a correction after about 14.2, maybe 14.3. We are definitely going to see a correction. But then again, we may not. You know, It may encourage other people to go into the market. I mean, who the hell knows? But I'm playing it safe. I'm not somebody who likes to take too much big ga bets, big gambles, that sort of thing. So, uh once again, be on the lookout for that. And moreover, remember that all these big increases in gas prices are definitely going to throw a wrench in the economy. So whatever we're seeing here in the short term, we're going to uh, see the long-lasting effects uh, of what's going on here now uh, in the long term, for Christ's sake. So anyway, let me go ahead and uh, get to the rest of the show, for Christ's sake. 646-652-4869 uh, is the number to call. Uh, let's get to the presidential campaign, because I, I don't know about you, but this has turned into a complete and utter sideshow. I mean, and, and I'm talking about the Republican GOP primary and caucuses, and at the same time, the Obama campaign. It's just a complete and utter disgrace. No substance being talked about whatsoever. Nothing but a bunch of propaganda, a bunch of divisive-type issues being put forth, and it's stupid. It's unbelievably pathetic, all right? Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because uh, Obama and his campaign actually released a statement stating that Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum's economic plans would actually increase the national deficit. Can you believe this crap? Can you believe that the Obama campaign has the audacity to criticize somebody's fiscal responsibility as it relates to their economic policies. This is the president, okay, that has already accumulated over $5 trillion in debts, all right? He just introduced another $3.8 trillion in deficits for fiscal year 2012. So if you do the math, that's almost $10 trillion in debts ever since Obama took office, all right? Now, if you compile all the debts put forth by every president that was ever in existence before Obama, those debts equated to $10 trillion, okay? So if you think about it, which is not really thinking about it, it's an actual goddamn fact, Barack Obama has spent more money than all the presidents that have ever resided in the presidency combined. Can you believe that? I mean, this is not a joke. You can look at it for yourself. The freaking Wall Street Journal had something to say about this, for Christ's sake, man. Ten trillion dollars in four years. 
four years of Obama, $10 trillion. And all the presidents, all right, before Obama accumulated a $10 trillion, I mean, that's what it was. $10 trillion was our deficit in 2008. Now it's going to get close to $20 trillion. $20 trillion. Where's all the money going? How about that? Where's all the money going? Well, why don't you take a look at all the crony capitalism that's happening in this country? How about that? Why don't you take a look at Obamacare? Why don't you take a look at freaking Stimulus Package 2? Give me a freaking break. It makes me sick. You know that? really makes me sick. And the Obama campaign actually has the audacity today to come out and say, well, um, actually Rick Santorum and Mitt Romney's economic plan will actually increase debts. Oh, yeah? Since when did you become Milton Friedman there, uh, Obama campaign? And, of course, when we talk about the Obama campaign, we're talking about David Axelrod, which is like the freaking uh, the, the, the freaking epicenter of freaking Barack Obama's brain. It's a disgrace, man. Anyway, I want to hear what you have to say about this. I mean, this whole political scene has turned into a complete and utter sideshow. It's a circus. It's pathetic. I mean, I don't hold much optimism for the presidency, and uh, I don't know what the hell's going to happen here. I really don't know what the hell's going to happen, because both sides of the political persuasion look like they want to become big-time spenders, and we don't need spenders right now in this fiscally fragile economy, all right? What we need to do is we need to lower taxes on personal income and corporate income, all right? We need to broaden the tax base. And at the same time, become fiscally responsible, all right? We need to start cutting from all the outgoing expenditures that we have as a government. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. I just can't believe that this is brain science for people. Brain science. Jesus Christ. Anyway, 646-652-4869 is the number to call. I want to hear what you have to say about it. We're talking about the Obama campaign claiming that Romney and Rick Santorum's uh, economic plan would grow the debts of America. And I find that laughable given the fact that this man has accumulated $10 trillion in debts in the four years that he has been president. Anyway, let's take some calls here. Let's see if anybody has anything to say. And, of course, folks, before we take calls, I'm going to warn you, we're going to have a bunch of milky liquors out here. We're going to have a bunch of jerk dicks trying to call in, trying to freaking prank call, and trying to fail troll and whatever the hell they're doing, for Christ's sake. I'm talking about these troll terrorists. I'm talking about these cyber vermin that just don't understand that, hey, you suck, all right? No lols whatsoever, jerk ass. No lulls. Anyway, before, uh, oh, Jesus Christ, let's just go ahead and uh, get to some calls. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. Let's take some calls right now. 802, you're on the horn. What do you think about Obama? Now you're taking too long. 718, what do you think about Obama? Now take the phone out your shit funnel. 520, what do you think about Obama? Now, what is this, the Helen Keller night again, for Christ's sake? This is Taco Tuesday, all right? 204, what do you think about Obama? I just killed a baby ghost. How about that? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah? Maybe yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe I should give out your number so somebody can, uh, you know, maybe call in and see if everything's all right. How about that? I don't know about that ghost. Oh, uh, why, why don't you know about that? Come on, now. You're that's calling up saying that there's a dead baby Kira. there, you fat skank. Where's huh? Kira Ghost? How about that? How about bye bye? Yeah, yeah, you better bye bye there, you two oh four seven eight three. Oh man, yeah, you bet yeah, uh huh. Yeah, that that's yeah, uh huh. You fat piece of crap. B- next time be a little lulzier, I'm giving up the last four digits there, you fat ham bone. Seven three two, what do you think about Obama? Vermin Supreme, two thousand twelve. Vermin Supreme 2012. Well, how come there's so many uh, Vermin Supreme supporters? What, what, what I got a lot support? invested in Colgate. You got a lot invested in Colgate? What, what, a, what a piece of crap. Get out of here. What a piece of crap. Vermin Supreme. For you idiots that don't know, Vermin Supreme is this just disgusting, pathetic sideshow. All right? This disgusting. 
disgusting, pathetic sideshow out here that is coming out with a freaking, you know, wizard uniform. Well, not that the wizards have uniform, but the wizard garb, you know, with the freaking dunce hat and all that crap. And he actually went out and had a freaking press conference. And he's actually running for freaking president out here. And these idiots are actually taking him serious, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? These morons on the Internet are taking him serious, for Christ's sake. Anyway, let's not take Vermin Supreme uh, serious here, all right? We're talking about Obama. We're talking about his criticisms about uh, uh, Santorum, his criticisms towards Mitt Romney, how their economic policies will be, what, increasing the debts? Yeah, like you should talk, brother. Anyway, 703, what do you think about Obama? <sighs> God, you fraud. I mean, Jesus Christ, put a cork in it. Put a cork in it before you call my show, you stupid skank. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, folks. I mean, do you see the kind of sick crap that I've got to sit over here and put up with? Do you see this crap? Jesus Christ. Anyway. Oh, my God. Uh, anyway, we're now in the second hour of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. All right, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. My apologies to what just happened. I mean, you know, but this is the kind of sick crap i got to put up with, for Christ's sake. Good Lord. Anyway, before we get into anything else, I'd like for everybody to please retweet the broadcast, all right? Everybody retweet the broadcast, all right? Go to the social networks. Go to the forums. Go to the blogs. And spread it around like wildfire. And let everybody know that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house. And, of course, for all you fat, jelly-ass ham bones that are too lazy to open up another freaking window on your browser, we got all kinds of little buttons underneath the player right there. Do you see that? We got Google Plus buttons, Facebook Like buttons, retweet this buttons, email this button, share this buttons. Use and abuse those freaking buttons, baby, all right? It's just a freaking click, for Christ's sake. God damn it. Anyway, before we move on to the rest of the broadcast, all right, it's already starting off a little shaky, to say the least, all right? I hate to even ask this. Engineer, do we have any goddamn Twitter shout-outs to be had out here? <laughs> well, according to the engineer, we do have a couple of Twitter shout-outs to be had out here. And, of course, uh, you know, before we get on... Uh, lock down this chat room! Implement chat room martial law, engineer! Implement chat room martial law! Anyway, folks, uh, before we get into anything else, I'd like for everybody to please retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account if you want a shout-out right here, right now, live on the True Capitalist radio broadcast, all right? Ghost Politics is the name to to follow and is the name to go to to retweet the first tweet. Jesus Christ, I can't believe I'm saying that. It's like a pick a pack a pick a pack a pick a pepper for Christ's sake. Anyway, ghost politics, all one word, no underscores, baby. All right, and retweet that first tweet on the Twitter account. Anyway, left chat room martial law. Let's see who we got going on out here, all right? Let's see who we got here, all right? We're giving shout-outs. Put them on the screen, engineer. Can't even see them. All right, just put them on the screen and shut up. All right, who do we got here, all right? Uh, we've got Johnny Capitalist in the house. What's going on in Johnny Capitalist? Uh, we've got Juggalo Hammond. Oh, Jesus Christ. What do we have? Uh, homo clowns uh, listening to us, for Christ's sake? Jesus Christ. I mean, no offense, of course, if you happen to like uh, that disgusting, despicable, uh, uh, insane clown pussy or posse or whatever the hell it's called. But uh, good Lord, all right? Good freaking Lord. Anyway, uh, we got uh, you know. Burden? Uh, I don't know what the hell that's supposed to mean. Who else we got? We got Rugrats for Ghost. Ah, Jesus Christ, with Tommy Pickles, for Christ's sake. Cypher 11 in the house. What's going on? Uh, here's Tankies for Ghost now. Jesus Christ. Uh, we got Reaper the Absol. 
Uh, we've got, who else we got? Who is this? Who, who is that, engineer? Magnum Dude. How you doing, Magnum Dude? Uh, we've got, uh, who is this? Halo Star Videos in the house. Jesus Christ, man. Look at all these goddamn retweets here. PC got games in the place. We got Capitalist Mao in the house. Loller Guy. Matino199 in the place. What's going on to Matino? Uh, we've got uh, Anders Ghost... Uh, shut up, you stupid moron. Anders Ghost Vic. Stupid jerk off. Uh, anyway, we got somebody by the name of Tiny Bladder. Tiny Bladder. I believe it or not, that's a real name. We got Sergeant Yoda in the house. Uh, veteran of Forum Wars in the place. Uh, we've got Equestrian Citizen in the house. What's going on, an equestrian citizen? Uh, we've got, uh, who else we got going on here? Who the hell is this? I don't even know who the hell that is. I'm not, I'm not, I'm that sick, twisted son of a bitch. We got some idiot named Boko Harum for ghosts. Yeah, real funny, asshole. The Boko Harum are a bunch of sick jerks. Anyway, we got Vesper the Snake in the house. How you doing there, Vesper? We got British Brian in the house. Uh, who else we got going on over here? I want to say, uh, CDI fan 237. How you doing? Uh, we got super hot days, Han Hanzo. What's going on, Han Hanzo? Don't, uh, make your hair in fuego, all right? Uh, we got DJ Penguin in the house. Uh, we've got, uh, who, who the hell is this? Westboro Ghost. I'm, I'm screw the Westboro Church, you jerk. Trying to coincide me with those sick assholes, for Christ's sake. Uh, who else we got? We got Knee Slappington in the house. Uh, who the hell else do we got going on over here? We got uh, uh, Ghost Anthony. Oh, you stupid son of a bitch. Anyway, we got Folsey the Organist in the house. Who the hell else do we got going on over here? Man, hey, look, if I already called your name, stop. Tweeting, all right? Stop retweeting if I already said your stupid name, all right? Anyway, we got John the Spongy in the house. Uh, we got the Hairbinger. Uh, who else do we got? We got uh, Alicia Zayla. What's going on? Uh, who else do we got going on over here? We got Ghost Tiny Bladder. What, 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 is, uh, what is this crap? What is this crap with this tiny bladder garbage? Jesus Christ. Anyway, we got Sir Poop Tickler in the house. Uh, who else do we got? We got uh, Deke. Ah, shove it up your ass, you sick son of a bitch. Twisters in Texas. Ah, that's it. Ah, that's enough. And here we go with the damn Sandusky Bath Boy and all this other crap. Shove it up your ass, all right? Anyway, what's going on to Fat Marshall? What's going on to Casey Capitalist? I want to say what's going on to Hambone Capitalist. I want to say what's going on to uh, Rena Chan. Uh, I want to say what's going on to NYC Med Shoes listening in right now in the Capitalist Army uh, chat room right now. I want to say what's going on to everybody who's listening right now in the Capitalist Army chat room. And you know who you are. You kick some freaking ass. Anyway, folks, that's about enough of that. That's about enough. Enough. I'm not saying. I'm not saying any more goddamn Twitter shoutouts. These people are just—they're taking it overboard. They're getting off keister here. All right. That's what they're doing. They're getting off keister. And I'm not going to sit over here and continue to take it for Christ's sake. God damn it. Anyway, folks, six four six six five two four eight six nine is the number to call. Uh, we were talking a little bit about Obama criticizing Romney and Santorum, saying that they would grow the deficit. Uh, but uh, we've tried to take some goddamn calls related to this crap, and nobody cares. So let's just go ahead and move on, shall we? Anyway, the next story we we're going to talk about today is the Supreme Court agreeing to reconsider the use of race in college admission decisions. Can you believe this crap? Can you believe this? Now, uh, believe it or not, uh, this case uh, was supposed to be settled uh, back in a court's decision in 2003, uh, but now they're going to take into consideration on whether or not race should be an issue when it comes to college registrations. And this is an interesting issue that the Supreme Court 
is uh, going to take. You know, they're going to hear a white student's claims that the University of Texas, yours truly's alma mater, mind you, uh, their race conscious admission policy cost her a spot in the freshman class. You know, the judges will hear the case in the term that begins in October, and it will definitely set a precedent as it relates to the uh, the, the whole affirmative action law that we have uh, come to know and love out here. I mean, it could make a major dent. And I know that we have a lot of college kids out there listening in, and I'd like to hear what you have to say about this. I mean, what happens if uh, they go back on this uh What's what was supposed to be settled law? I mean, all the liberals are pissed about this. They were talking about it all over the goddamn morning radio shows today. These freaking liberals that are questioning the Supreme Court for even uh, bringing this up. The Supreme Court agrees to reconsider the use of race in college admission decisions. So this could mean the end of affirmative action, uh, at least as it relates to college admissions. I want to hear what you have to say about it. Six four six six five two four eight six nine. This is an interesting issue. I know we got a lot of college kids. What do you think about this, huh? Area code nine two five. What's up? Hey, Ghost. Just want to say your show's awesome, and um, I think that this is totally should go on. So, gotta go. Well, what shouldn't go on? Uh, do you think that there should be affirmative action uh, as as it relates to college admissions? Well, I think it's really personal preference, but. For me, I think it should go, because, I mean, there's some really biased opinions all the time, so I think it should go. Okay. Uh, Do you think that right now, as the uh, population of colleges, public colleges, mind you, if we take a look at them, do you think that there would be a disproportionate number of minorities to white ratio? Um, I actually do think that, because um, my uncle himself, uh, he knows a couple people who have actually made decisions whether on race, and it was really disappointing. Well, like, in what sense? I mean, did they act favorably to ethnic minority groups, or did they say they weren't going to hire ethnic minority groups based upon preconceived notions? Well, I think some of it was because of, um, let's say, their, I guess, non-ethnicity supporting them, and some was just crazy. Like, we had, we know a couple people that are on there that shouldn't even be on there anymore because... They were, like, total, like, white only. Like, they think that colleges should be, like, white only. And it was just, you know. Man, you know, I mean, you know, I'd like to believe that America is beyond this primitive racial crap. But, uh, you know, to be completely honest with you, uh, and we're going to talk about this later, when I see this Jeremy Lin fiasco that's happening as it relates to the ESPN situation, I don't think that America is, uh, you know, out of this racial cloud, for Christ's sake. I mean, can we get over race already? I mean, Jesus Christ, what has racism brought to humanity other than habitual strife? What has an emphasis on one's culture brought to society other than habitual strife, for Christ's sake? Jesus Christ, give me my drink, give me my drink, for Christ's sake. Oh man, that's some good stuff. Anyway, I want to thought I want to thank that uh, young man for calling up. I want to hear what you have to say about this. We're discussing the Supreme Court agreeing to reconsider the use of race in college admissions. For Christ's sake, they could change the way college admissions admit students and could completely eliminate affirmative action as it relates to colleges. I want to hear what you have to say about it. Six four six six five two four eight six nine. Is the number to call. Let's take some more callers. 513, what's up? You're on the horn. I want to shut my half in penis. Shit, my dad. Pink. Now, shut up, you stupid splicing piece of crap. Uh, 812, what's up? What do you think about this? Jesus Christ, we don't want to hear this crap. We, we, you understand? We don't want to hear this crap. I mean, we're talking about... What the hell's happening in the Supreme Court out here? All right? They're reconsidering the use of race in college admissions. I think that should bother a lot of people that aren't white. All right? That means that, uh, yeah, if there happens to be a bureaucratic system within that public institution, 
that's all a bunch of pale faces? Well, you know as well as I that they are going to admit a bunch of pale faces, all right? But it seems to me that there's not enough uh, educated ethnic minorities that are listening to my show that are going to call in and give me a decent freaking uh, uh, an argument relating to the affirmative action bit, for Christ's sake. Anyway, let's take some call. 831, what's up? Hey, Gus. How's it going? What do you think about this, man? I personally think this is a bunch of crap. I mean, In what regard? I don't care what race you are. If you can get into the col- into a college in the first place, you should do it. So do you think uh, affirmative action should be uh, you know, some kind of a factor in choosing uh, college admissions? Um, honestly, I don't really know that much. You don't really know? I mean, well, you have to understand what affirmative action is. It means that, by law, uh, the university is forced, uh, whether they want to or not, uh, to allow a certain percentage of ethnic minorities within their university. Of course, this is for public universities. And uh, <clears throat> if they fail to do that, well, they're infringing upon the affirmative action laws that have been put forth that uh, is supposed to force uh, public institutions uh, to, you know, uh, allowing a certain number of ethnic minorities to go in and actually uh, be educated in the higher uh, institutions. So w- what do you think? I mean, do you think that there should be a mandatory percentage of certain minorities uh, put into the higher education system? I wouldn't say that there needs to be a mandatory number. I would just hope that no matter what ethnicity you are, you can get into a college. I mean, ultimately. Uh- uh, absolutely, but uh, do you think that we're in a point in time in history where everybody is pale face? You know, everybody is part of the old good old boy network, and that if we removed uh, affirmative action uh, as it relates to college admissions, that uh, you know we would see nothing but pale faces walking around college campuses all over the country? Well, that sounds pretty reasonable to me. That sounds. Uh, I mean, what do you mean, I mean I'm agreeing. I'm agreeing with you on this. Well, I'm asking you a question. What, 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 what do you think? I've already said what I think. Oh, Jesus Christ. Get this, get this idiot. Oh, he's trolling. Get him off, for Christ's sake. That sounds pretty good, for Christ's sake. I'm asking you a question, asshole. Jesus Christ. Anyway, look, we're supposed to be talking about this Supreme Court case here. All right, the Supreme Court is agreeing to reconsider the use of race in college decisions, or uh, admission decisions, mind you. And uh, I want to see if anybody has anything to say about this crap, all right? 646-652-4869. Jesus Christ. Area code 214, you're on the horn. Jesus Christ, here we go with the deaf mutes. 204, what's up? Get your stupid stickers! Oh, that's that fatty again, for Christ's sake. 615, what's up? Hey, guys, what's up? How you doing, man? What do you think about this uh, college admission situation? Honestly, if your granny's pussy felt cold after she died or if it stayed warm. Uh, well, I, we couldn't even hear that failed troll because your phone sucks the chrome of a 57 Chevy bumper. And maybe if you didn't get your goddamn EVT phone from the government, we would have heard that shit. Anyway, uh, 817, what's up? Ghost, I think it's time to finally give you my first chapter of my fan fiction. Chapter 1, Ghost and the Engineer. Are you... You sound like a fruit, for Christ's sake. Listen to the lack of bass in the voice in that fruiter, for Christ's sake. No wonder he's writing exotic stories about me, for Christ's sake, you sick son of a bitch. You know what I mean? You sound like the kid... That was the frickin' son of, of, of Judith White and freaking Who's the Boss. You sound so fruity. 901, what's up? You're on the horn. Come on. Yeah, you're on. What's up? Well, man, I think this whole crap with the fucking college, I'm sorry for cussing there, man, but, like, it's freaking stupid. Well, what do you mean by it? Well, why do you think it's stupid? Well, are you for or against affirmative action? I'm against all this crap about if you're any kind of racist, you at least be in the freaking college. Any college you go to, I mean, I mean, like, that kind of crap just stupid. I mean, I'm not... Yeah, yeah, gr- great insight there, asshole. All right, give me a freaking break. 802, what's up? What do you think about this stuff? 
Here, here we go with the De- Helen Keller deaf mutes. 252, what's up? Hey, Gus, what's up? How you doing, um, man? What do you think about this stuff? Now, I'm really indecisive about this issue, only because with if they keep the affirmative action, they will have different races going forward into colleges and stuff like that. And I can also see if they didn't have it, we'd have a bunch of, you know, pale faces, as you say, walking around. So I'm pretty indecisive about it, and I also agree that if you can get into a college about what race, ethnicity, black, Mexican, white, whatever, if you can get in, go for it. Um, well, you, you have to understand what this law does, okay? Let's say right. that they have already met their quota for white, pale face yeah. folks, and now the university is trying to admit ethnic minorities. Well, yeah. uh, if they happen to get more white folks after they meet their quota that actually supersede yeah. the expectations and the qualifications right. for the university, they would have to n- ignore the pale face and go for an ethnic minority that would probably have half the grade point average as this person oh, because gosh. it's based upon this affirmative action law. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. All right. Yeah. Um, I would say I'm still pretty indecisive about it, um, but I would have to – because I know there's pros and cons of either or. Um, uh, it's just I'm, I'm still indecisive about the whole issue, but it is a pretty interesting issue to do on it, and, and I would like to see where this goes. Well, unfortunately, I would like to see where it goes too, but uh... – it may be the end of it. I don't know. It may not be. I mean, we do have some uh, Supreme Court justices that are minority, and they could take this into consideration. Uh, but then again, maybe not. I mean, you know, these are minorities that grew up in hard times that uh, that didn't have, you know, uh, affirmative action to push them through uh, the uh, public – or excuse me, public – the higher education system, for Christ's sake. So uh, – Once again, I mean, this is a very serious issue. I'm going to take a couple of more calls on this, and, uh, you know, I'd like to hear what people personally believe. I mean, you have to understand what this affirmative action as it relates to college admissions means. It means that if they fulfill their quota of white folks, all right, and they start having to accept Mexican folks, but, you know, most of the Mexican folks or the black folks or the uh, uh, Asian folks or, or whatever ethnic minority group that we're talking about. Believe it or not, these ethnic minority groups are labeled in the bureaucracy. So if they happen to be like Russian or if they happen to be like Romanian or something of that nature, they're still white. They're still pale. Th- I, I kid you not, this is government-mandated crap. All right. But anyway, if uh, they have already fulfilled all their white obligation quota and they still have, uh, you know, white kids trying to, uh, you know, file to admit in the college that are superseding the minimal requirements, they can't they can't accept those white kids. All right. Because they are now, uh, you know, they, they've already fulfilled their quota. They, they're going to have to go for the. Lower end minority kids, or unless there happens to be, you know, uh, uh, valedictorians and stuff like that. But I mean, I'm just telling you how it is. They will have to go for a lower GPA ethnic minority as opposed to somebody who is white and having a high grade point average. This is the uh, affirmative action system that we have. And this is what's being taken to court. I want to see what you have to say about it, all right? One more time. 440, what do you think about it? I think it's a bunch of bull crap, Ghost. What do you mean? What's going on? What do you think about it? What? Do you, what, what do you, what's bull crap? I just, well, to be honest, it's just a quiet dumb time. Quiet dumb time. Uh, ghost, like... Uh, fail, troll, you fruity-ass bastard. Give me a break. I, I hope you get beaten tonight. I understand that? I hope, I hope your father walks in and sees you fruiting off and you get freaking beaten with a stick. You stupid, silly bastard. 214, what do you think? What's going on? Well, see, there's a big problem with that. Because if we only allow ethnic minor, or if we limit the amount of certain, like, white people to go to school there, then there's going to be a big problem. Because if I want to go into a college, but I can't because of the quota, I am unable to, you know, get maybe a PhD in what I want. And that's going to create a lot of problems for citizens throughout the United States. Because they can't get a job and support their family. Well, I mean, it's happening now. I mean, that's why this uh, this white female, this white student, 
that took the damn uh, court case all the way to the Supreme Court. That's what she's arguing. She's arguing that she was overlooked as far as her admission to University of Texas because uh, they had to allow a certain quota of minorities into the university, minorities that were less qualified to go to the university than her. And she's challenging the law, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? Anyway, uh, let me take one more call on this, and we're moving on. 715, you got an opinion on this? Yeah, this Merck. Burp. Burp. I got uh, 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 of course not. Just fruiting up, for Christ's sake. Anyway, let's move on, all right? Anyway, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, the National Security Agency, because they recently announced that they are concerned about Anonymous, conveniently enough. I don't know what the hell that's supposed to be. They're concerned about Anonymous because they may attack the electrical grid. What? I mean, look, I don't agree with Anonymous. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't agree with Anonymous whatsoever, but I can tell you that I have never heard through the underworld of the internets that Anonymous is even going to touch the electrical grid, for Christ's sake. I mean, it doesn't even make any sense, all right? This sounds like some kind of, you know, uh, implantation for a potential black operation or something, man. I, I don't know. I'm telling you this right now. This is a disgrace what's happening. Now, I don't agree with Anonymous, all right? I don't agree with what the hell they're doing. But for them to go out there, and I'm talking about the National Security Agency, I'm talking about the NSA, to put out this report saying that they are concerned about Anonymous attacking the electrical grid is, is rather perplexing to me. Because why are they saying Anonymous will do it? I mean, they don't think that potentially some of these Iran hackers could potentially do such a hack? You know, the same Iran hackers that hacked the freaking stealth freaking Predator drone out of the sky? I mean, give me a freaking break, man. They're going to attack the electrical grid. What a joke. What an utter joke. What an utter joke. I don't believe this one bit. I don't care if the National Security Agency is putting this out. I don't believe that Anonymous will hack the uh, uh, the electrical grid. And if anybody claims to be Anonymous and claims to uh, uh, be hacking the electrical grid, they are not anonymous, all right? They are not. So anyway, and of course, for you folks that are unaware of what I'm talking about, anonymous, of course, is this uh, Internet collective that is comprised of a group of anonymous people uh, that have a uh, idea of sorts and a belief system that is still a mystery to me, to be honest with you. I have no idea what the hell they believe in, what they're doing, uh, what the fundamentals is to their organization. I have no freaking idea. You know, I have, I have no clue. I'm not a big fan of Anonymous. I didn't agree with the Occupy Wall Street protest, for Christ's sake. I thought it was a joke. All right. I, I didn't agree with uh, the Sony hack. You know what I mean? I thought the Sony hack was an utter joke. All it did was uh, give uh, Geo Hots, George Hots, it, you know, it just gave him a freaking job at Facebook, for Christ's sake. You know, so, I, I mean, I, I don't really uh, agree with what Anonymous is doing. I think it's, uh, you know, pretty pathetic, uh, the kind of hacks they pull off and the reasons they pull them off. But I will be the first one to tell you that I don't believe that they will hack the freaking electrical grid, all right? I, I don't believe that they will. I think it's a it's a disgrace that the NSA would even put this out. What a joke, all right? Well, what an utter joke. Anyway, look, 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 I want to hear what you have to say about this, all right? 646-652-4869. I mean, do you fear if Anonymous is going to attack the electrical grid? Do you fear it? I want to hear from you. Nine seven two. What do you think about anonymous? Yeah, well, we don't want to hear you freaking breathe, you fat ham bone. God damn it! Get off the mic. Two three four. What do you think about anonymous? How about turning down your radio, jerk dick? Two zero one. What do you think about anonymous? Hello, ghost. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think Anonymous is a kind of ridiculous. 
All right, elaborate, man. Well, the, what Anonymous has been doing is they're they're trying to prove a point, but it's not it's it's not really working, and it's kind of hard to explain because you caught me off guard here with like that question. Well, I mean, you're on hold, you're on cue, you got your hand raised, you need to be prepared, all right? Get a little sharper, for Christ's sake. 636, what do you think about Anonymous? Angry braces, Jewish hambo. Angry braces, Jewish hambo. Angry braces, Jewish... Yeah, all right, yeah, real funny, we get it. All right, we've already heard that remix, asshole, all right? <laughs> all right, real funny, jerk. We're supposed to be talking about Anonymous here and about how the NSA, the National Security Agency out here in America, is claiming that they're afraid that Anonymous may hit the electrical grid, and I want to hear what you have to say about it. Jesus Christ. Area code 609, you're on the horn. Hey, Ghost, what's up? Can you hear me, man? Yeah, we can hear you. How you doing? All right. Um, talking about Anonymous, man, dude, they're... They're a joke to me, frankly. It's just a bunch of internet schmucks thinking that they're some big deal. A bunch of internet schmucks that think they're a big deal. I mean, what, what is the purpose? I mean, what is their creo? I, I don't understand what their philosophy is. I mean, you know, the things that they have uh, taken credit for have not been consistent with any type of a goddamn uh, – uh, political or economic or any kind of agenda whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, they try and act like they're some sort of a, like a mob or some crap like that, but frankly, they, they avoid leadership and they avoid any sort of real organization. And it just turns from um, an, an efficient machine of they could do anything to just a bunch of idiots screaming protests wherever they think they can. Well, you know, that's a good point, 609. That's a very good point because I, I've been always critical of Anonymous in that regard, that they are not consistent. All they do is just kind of yell protests, and, uh, you know, before you know it, I mean, it's protest for dumb crap. With all due respect, Anonymous, I mean, freaking Scientology. I mean, I've said this time and time again. You know that I've, I've said this time and time again, but freaking Scientology? Who gives a shit about Scientology? Jesus Christ, who gives a crap? Jesus Christ, man. I mean, I've never seen so much energy and effort go after some two-bit cult in my life, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? Here we are. We're in the midst of a potential economic collapse. We're in the midst of totalitarianism being incrementally infringed upon our liberties, for Christ's sake. And Anonymous is go going out there and protesting Scientology. Oh, yeah. Great. Jesus Christ. Anyway, I'm, I'm just, uh, I don't even want to talk about this subject matter anymore, for Christ's sake. I'm just saying that Anonymous, in my opinion, wouldn't attack the electrical grid. Now, if they do, well, I mean, I guess I was wrong, but uh, I would like to think that they won't. I'd like to think that they're, uh, you know, hacking things like, you know, FBI conferences and, uh, you know, things of that nature. You know, things that will actually, you know, the information will actually help people or something of that nature. Anyway, let me move on to another subject matter. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Iran Iran has warned the world of preemptive action in its nuclear dispute with the world, all right? That's right. That's right. Iran is saber-rattling even that much more, claiming that it will preemptively strike, baby. It will preemptively strike if it feels threatened. So, you know, we're inching that much more closer to World War III. Oh, my God. M that much more closer. And you know what that means, baby? Here comes the draft, they're going to draft your ass, they're going to send you to war, and you're going to fight it. I mean, and you know what's really sad, is that in 2009, Iran had a goddamn revolution, all right? I mean, they rose up, for Christ's sake, against the Ayatollah. They were freaking yelling death to the Ayatollah in 2009. They were yelling death to Ahmadinejad. In 2009, but did, did the United States say anything? 
Did we do anything? Did we try to help that opposition? No! Whatsoever! Not once! We could have done anything in a clandestine manner to help that revolution in 2009. But what did we do? We did nothing. We watched the Ayatollah not only suppress in a dramatic totalitarian fashion the opposition that was protesting in Iran, but they went after the protesters' families and killed them as well. And we sat back and did nothing. Now look at Iran, huh? Look at them now, 2012, huh? Look at them now, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ, what a joke. All right, what an utter joke. And now Iran is flexing so much nuts that they're threatening for preemptive strike if they feel threatened. And I want to hear what you have to say about it. 646-652-4869. What do you think about Iran? Huh? I mean, they're isolating themselves, for Christ's sake. I mean, we reported yesterday that they are not doing business with the U.K. and France anymore. They are not selling them any kind of oil whatsoever. And uh, it's kind of shooting themselves in the foot, because as I said, the only people that are willing to still buy Iranian oil is China and India. And, of course, they don't want to pay world market prices. (laughs) They want a legitimate premium, a major premium from the world market price and Iran is going to have to sit there and oblige. They're just going to have to sit there, take it and eat it and sell uh, to the Chinese and sell to the Indians at a lower price and uh, you know, unbelievable, unfreaking believable Anyway, I want to hear what you have to say about it. Iran flexing nuts once again saying that it will preemptively strike if it feels threatened I want to hear what you have to say about it. 646-652-4869. Is this World War Three? Is this World War Three? I want to hear from you. 815. What do you think about this? Ghost? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure Iran is gonna to try to nuke somebody eventually and it's gonna either yeah, it's gonna pretty much be World War Three, as far as I can tell. Uh you, you you don't even know. I mean they don't even have a nuclear weapon yet, jerk. All right. I mean, have you been listening, for Christ's sake? Haven't you been listening to my show? I mean, the whole reason why the whole world is having, you know, somewhat of a problem uh, with Iran is because they're trying to build a nuclear weapon right now. They don't have nuclear capabilities at this point in time. Jesus Christ, they're going to nuke somebody. If anything, they're just going to go and preemptively strike. I mean, you know, they have already stated that they have operatives throughout the world that will detonate themselves uh, uh, for preemptive strikes. This is an absolute fact. All right? So don't be surprised if uh, Iran calls for, you know, some hits here in this country if they feel threatened out here. I'm just saying, you know, this is already – this is happening now, man. I mean, just look up that poor young lady in Houston – that was an ex-Iranian citizen who came and defected to America that was highly renowned and highly known in her Iranian Houston-based community. She was killed, gunned down, as she was going to her house, for Christ's sake, in cold-blooded assassination fashion. And according to all reports and according to the authorities, they believe that it is affiliated with her Iranian opposition. So all I'm saying is is that you folks need to realize that Iran's not kidding around. All right? So I'm just saying. I mean, and and the the sad part about it is is that we're living in modernity, for Christ's sake. You know that? We have no business fighting holy wars, for Christ's sake. God damn it. We're living in modernity, man. We have no business fighting these goddamn primitive holy wars, for Christ's sake. And it makes me sick. It makes me sick to my stomach that we're still we're still messing around with this old primitive crap. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. I want to hear from you. What do you think about Iran saber-rattling, saying that they will preemptively strike if they feel threatened? I want to hear from you. Area code 614, what's up? You're on the horn. Hello, Ghost. How are you doing today? Not too bad. Well, that's good to hear. I'm in West Texas at the moment. As for Iran, I can see us 
I almost think the Chinese may actually assassinate Ahmed Idrisad and try and throw in a figurehead. I see them moving towards the position of world police instead of us. Well, you know, I'm I'm glad you brought that up because they've already made that apparent as it relates to the Syrian situation. The Syrian situation, they're calling the West out, believe it or not. We talked about this yesterday for inciting for inciting the supposed uprising that's happening in Syria. All right? China has the audacity of sitting over here and, and, and pointing the finger at us. I mean, they're trying to take some goddamn humanitarian role as it relates to this situation in Syria, for Christ's sake. Can you believe this crap? I mean, this is the same country that brought us Tiananmen Square and killed over, what, over 300,000 people or whatever the hell it was. These are the same people that are killing and just torturing Tibetan people in, in, in the country of Tibet, in the region of Tibet, for Christ's sake. So you're absolutely right. I don't know if they'll necessarily assassinate uh, Ahmadinejad. I don't think that they'll be able to do that sort of thing. I don't think so. I think that what's going to happen is is they're going to juice Iran for cheap oil so they can continue their economic growth because believe me, I mean, China has seen unprecedented economic growth. I mean, why do you think that the world elites and the world summit in this past January, when they were out there meeting in Davos, Switzerland, they were out there talking about the end of Western capitalism? And what, are those, what were those elites out there in Davos, Switzerland talking about? They were talking about embracing state capitalism and utilizing the model of China as the basis of the model of the world. All right, and, and this is an absolute fact. This just happened. They're openly admitting it. They are openly admitting what I have said for the longest time, that they are openly accepting the model of China as the model that will take us into the 21st century. I kid you not. And now, believe it or not, they're... They're starting to flex nuts, man. I mean, especially with this Syria situation. I honestly believe that they may go into Syria. I honestly believe that. I mean, and the reason that they're saying that the West is somehow causing the uprise in Syria is to win brownie points with the remnants of this Arab Spring out here. I mean, they're playing the cards right, man. I mean, this is serious business. And if we ever see so-called Chinese peacekeepers go into any country, well, then you're goddamn right, man. I mean, because you got to think. The Chinese got a billion five standing army. Or excuse me, a million five standing army. Excuse me. One million five hundred thousand soldiers that they'll just throw down and, and they can use anywhere, for Christ's sake. They can use anywhere. And let me tell you, you know, them actually flexing nuts as it relates to the serious situation should concern everybody. Anyway, uh, we'll come back to you there, uh, 614. Let's take another caller here. Uh, 720, what's up? What do you think about uh, Iran? In this technique, a slow process such as plant growth is photographed at intervals and unfolds at high speed. And what the hell do who gives a shit? How about, who cares, for Christ's sake, you moron? We're talking about Iran here, not horticulture. Jesus Christ. 936, what do you think about Iran? Ghost, it's Harbinger, not Hairbanger. Harbinger. All right, okay, what's going on with the Hairbanger? We got it. 754, what's up? What do you think about Iran? Jesus Christ, what the hell, are you, were you at church or something? Sound like a freaking preacher over there. 508, what's up? Go, go! Pam Bone is racist. Go, go! Pam Bone is racist. Go, go! Pam Bone is racist. National Socialist Pam Bone is racist. Oh, shove it up your ass, you stupid splicing, remixing piece of crap. Shove it up your ass! You're lucky I'm in a good mood, for Christ's sake, for all the money that I've made today. You understand that? You're lucky I'm in a damn good mood. 
We're talking about Iran warning of a preemptive strike if it feels threatened, for Christ's sake. And you people think it's a great day in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, for Christ. I mean, look, look at you people. You're, you don't have a care in the world, don't you? Don't you? God damn, you could be drafted into this freaking holy war, and you people don't give a rat's ass. Jesus Christ. 603, you're on the horn. Ghost, you, my good sir, are a ham bone. Now, shut up. You, my good sir, are a fruit bowl. Just by the way you sound, for Christ's sake. I mean, where's the bass in these young men's voices, for Christ's sake? Can somebody explain that to me? Where are the bass in these young men's voices, for Christ's sake? Jesus Christ, whatever happened to the old deep voice? Whatever happened to that? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Whatever happened to, like, you know, Rocky Balboa voice or something? Hey, yo. Hey, yo, yo, you think I'm a dummy, you know what I mean? You're calling me a dummy because, you know, I don't know how to talk all the big words, you know what I mean? Hey, Adrian! 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 I mean, seriously, can we get some bass in the voice here, please? Jesus Christ. Uh, two, 276, you're on the horn. All right, I got a question about Iraq or Iran. Yeah, go, go ahead. Does your grandma know you're gay? Can you answer the question? What the hell are you watching, anyway? I hear Mr. Sandman going on in the background. What the hell are you watching? I asked you a question. What the hell are you watching? No, look, that was a failed troll. We don't care about it. We want to hear what the hell. Why are you watching something with the freaking soundtrack, Mr. Sandman? I want to know. Why? That's a serious question. I want you to answer me. Honestly. Does your grandma know you're gay? Can we get a failed troll on this asshole? Oh, my God. What a failed troll. Jesus Christ. I, I hope go, I hope God gives you cancer of the cock for that disgusting, despicable troll, you stupid, pathetic, over-feminized loser. Jesus Christ, we're supposed to be talking about Iran here. 972, what do you think about Iran? All right, what I think is that Iran is a stupid asshole that's going to get their ass kicked. Trust me, if everybody's in danger, we're all going to team up and kick their ass. Do you honestly believe that? Yeah, well, think of it like this. If we all have a common enemy, we're all going to team up and kick its ass. Uh, I, I, I wish that was true, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. Unfortunately, I mean, we got too many people that don't even want to go out to work. What makes you think they want to go out to war, huh? I mean, look at, look at what is it, 70% of the American public is collecting some form, some form of government entitlement. And you want these people to go out to war for Christ? And we're all going to team up as some freaking team or something? I don't think so, man. I mean, this is, I don't think so. This ain't that generation of World War II. This is a completely different generation. I mean, these people, uh, you know, they get pissed if you take American Idol off the air for a freaking half a season. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, you should have seen when they took MASH off the air. Y'all remember that? Oh, my God, white people were crying everywhere when they took off MASH. I mean, it was stupid. I mean, that's what these people are more concerned about than, uh, you know, worried about going to war or uh, coming together around a common enemy or anything of that nature. I, I just don't have much faith in uh, the majority of the American masses. I'm sorry, all right? And they've given me no evidence to, you know, show that I should be optimistic, no evidence whatsoever. Anyway, we're going to take a couple of more callers on Iran, and we're moving on. 212, you're on the horn. What do you think about Iran? And one really big reason. Suck my dick, nigga. What, that's it? That's it, and you're going to hang up for Christ's sake? Jesus Christ. I mean, you, I mean Jesus, this is fail. This is utter fail. 252, what's up? What do you think about Iran? Jesus Christ, you know, you damn failed trolls, you know, you guys are ruining my Taco Tuesday, you know that? You stupid failed trolls are ruining my Taco Tuesday! You stupid failed troll bastards! Christ. Yeah, we should turn this into Fail Troll Tuesday. That's what we should be turning it into.
to, for Christ's sake. A freaking fail troll Tuesday. Good God. Jesus Christ. It pisses me off, man. It pisses me off. I mean, Jesus Christ. Give me the mic. Do you understand? It pisses me off, for Christ's sake, because I'm out here. I'm trying to kick you some knowledge, for Christ's sake. I'm trying to deliver you some information. I mean, I'm freaking shooting pearls here. I'm shooting pearls at you morons, and you idiots just do nothing but call me and give me this nonsense, all right? This is what you do, man. You call me and give me this nonsense, man, every single goddamn day. Freaking ruining my Taco Tuesday. Sorry, sacks of crap. Jesus Christ, let me move on to another subject matter so I can just get through this crap. All right, did you hear the Red Cross today? They're calling for a ceasefire in Syria. Oh, yeah, thanks, the Red Cross. Yeah, some non-government organization is going to announce a ceasefire, and all of a sudden, everybody who's been killing each other is just going to stop. Yeah, yeah, that that's a great remedy there, Red Cross, you stupid morons. Jesus Christ. And in and, and the time that they said this announcement of a ceasefire, 60 Syrians dead today. 60 Syrians dead today. Can you believe this crap? Bashar al-Assad's army is not stopping. I mean, how long have we been talking about this? We've been talking about this since last year, for Christ's sake. And guess how long I've been advocating to, for somebody somebody to do something. I mean, end these, this crime against humanity, for Christ's sake. There's already over 6,000 people dead in Syria. I mean, how many more people have to die before somebody does something about this crap? I mean, what good is the United Nations if they can't prevent this type of disgusting atrocity? What good is NATO? What good are all these international institutions if they can't prevent this type of crap? What good is the Arab League? What what good are all these institutions, man, if they can't prevent this type of goddamn crime against humanity? Jesus Christ, another 60 dead in Syria. And I want to hear what you have to say about it. 646-652-4869. This is disgusting, man. This is disgusting. Jesus Christ. 234, what's up? This Apple product that was rolled out in 2010 has a 9.7-inch screen and is half an inch thick. Uh, what is the latest sausage your mother found at Applebee's to put in her pink taco? You stupid sack of crap. Three, two, three. You're on the horn. All right, I'm fighting for the ghostly youth. Ghostly youth. Ghostly youth. God damn it, shut up. God damn it, shut up. I've told all you idiots not to call me Ghostler. There's nothing funny about that crap, you stupid scumbags. Stop calling me Ghostler. Jesus Christ, man. 754, what do you think about Syria? This just in. This is fucking ghost style. Ghost? There's wind all over the- Christ. I mean, do you see what I gotta come? I gotta put up with this crap every day, man. Jesus Christ. 516, you're on the horn. You know, I, I say we gotta kill Bashar al Assad. That, that goddamn guy's killing all his people. I mean, that that's just fucked up. You're goddamn right. I mean, even a little kid. Even a nine-year-old little kid knows that this crime against humanity that's happening in Syria is just completely ridiculous. And you idiots, look at what you're doing. Look at you people. Not giving a flying crap. I'm very proud of whoever the hell that nine-year-old was. You keep uh, yourself astute of what's going on here in international relations. I'm proud of you. Jesus Christ, we're talking about Syria once again. The Red Cross is calling for a ceasefire. Oh, great. 
Jesus Christ, 60 people dead today on that stupid ceasefire call by that fr- freaking ridiculous NGO that always needs money, right? Always. They raise billions and billions and billions of dollars every time there's some goddamn natural disaster, and yet they always need money, the Red Cross, right? Give me a freaking break. I don't. I wouldn't give them a red cent. How about that? I wouldn't give the Red Co- Cross a red cent. You understand that? I wouldn't give the Red Cross a red cent, you stupid scumbags. So what, so they can keep up their bureaucracy? Jesus Christ. 810, what do you think about Syria? Uh, Two things. Firstly, I want to apologize to you because I prank called you on Monday. All right. And, sec- and secondly, after seeing a video from a kid who got his job blown off, from a Syrian military official, I gotta say, Viva la Revolution, motherfuckers! Well, yeah, I, I hear you. I mean, you, you gotta rise up against Bashar al-Assad after that. That was a disgusting video. That was a horrific crime against humanity. I mean, and and, and stuff like that is happening on a consistent basis out there in Syria. These goddamn Bashar al-Assad's army are literally just causing nothing but pure butchery. And it's not just the men. It's the children. I mean, they're dismembering children's body parts and then just leaving the freaking carcass out there in the middle of the freaking village in the town just so that they can intimidate everybody else. Jesus Christ. I'm going to take a couple more calls on Syria, and we're moving on. Area code 989, you're on the horn. What do you think about Syria? Hey, uh, my, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey. Uh. Oh, no, this ain't hee-haw, all right, you stupid shit-kicking hicks. Stop guzzling down the cheese whiz, and maybe you'll get some goddamn brain cells going to concoct some kind of a goddamn sentence. 502, what do you think about Syria? Hey, Gus, is this me? Yeah. Oh, about time. Um, I think... About time. Well, just sit there and keep waiting. How about that? About time. How about there you sit there and keep waiting? You don't tell me about time, you scumbag. Jesus Christ, about time. You uh, Shut up. Stupid moron. 212, you're on the horn. This type of roadside establishment got its name and original design from a Pullman product. 30 seconds. Good luck. Are you kidding me? Jesus Christ. What is a Polish sausage up your mother's clogged up bleached anal passage, you sick son of a bitch? I mean, enough of these stupid, dumbass, stupid sound clips. God damn it, man. I mean, I just... I don't even even know if I want to do this show anymore. I don't even... Christ's sake, man. I mean, every day I come up here, man. Every goddamn day I come up here and I shoot pearls to you idiots, and this is how you freaking repay me, for Christ's sake. You call me Ghostler, for Christ's sake? Stop calling me Ghostler. There's nothing funny about that shit. Call me a freaking hand bone. You made fun of my granny. You besmirched my show. You make freaking YouTube videos about me to talk and garbage about me, for Christ's sake, every freaking day, man. You mad? You mad? You mad? I mean, that's all I'm getting on the freaking chat room. You mad? You mad? I'm pissed! Piece of crap. It just... It's... It pisses me off, goddammit. All the time and energy and effort that I put into this show, that I contribute to this freaking internet, for Christ's sake, and this is how you idiots repay me, for Christ's sake. This is how you people do it, man. God damn it, man. God damn it. I'm sick of you people sometimes. You know what? Sometimes I get freaking sick of get sick of get sick of it. Damn it. Damn it. 
I'm freaking sick of you. Goddamn. I'm sick of you. Damn it. Screw all you 
All right. Uh, let me calm my ass down. I'm going to go ahead and calm my ass down, all right? All right. Calm my ass down. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to calm my ass down here, folks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm going off keister here, but I can't help it, man. Listen to these people. Listen to these people. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. Uh, give me my drink for God. Give me my drink. Let me get a freaking drink. Uh. All right. All right, that's that's calming me down now. That's calming me down. Uh, Let me have another drink. Let me have another drink. Uh, All right. Let me calm my ass down now, folks. All right. We are now in the the third and final hour. As a matter of fact, we're already six or seven minutes in. To the third and final hour of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost, and God damn it. Jesus Christ. Oh, man. I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me, for Christ's sake. I'm sorry that I'm going off keister, for Christ's sake, man, but God. God damn it, just listen to these scumbags. Uh, Anyway, you all already know what to do for Christ's sake. Go ahead and freaking retweet the broadcast, all right? Got all kinds of buttons underneath there. Yeah, yeah, you already know. It's just a freaking click. Go do whatever you got to do. And screw you people. I'm not doing no Twitter shout outs, you scumbags. You're going to sit over here and treat me like this. I'm not going to do no Twitter shout-outs. So all of you people that are sitting over here laughing at me, I'm sitting over here breathing hard. I'm sitting over here freaking gagging for Christ's sake. You people that are laughing, screw you. Screw you. Screw you, man. I'm not doing no goddamn Twitter shout-outs. I'm not doing no goddamn Twitter shout-outs for you scumbags. You son of a bitch. You people are making me run behind now, you dumb assholes. How do you like that? We're running late now because of you stupid bastards. Jesus Christ. Uh, Oh, my God. Anyway. Where the the hell am I at? I lost my place. Where am I at, engineer? God damn it. All right. I remember we were talking a little bit about Syria, but, man, we're running behind on the schedule here. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the Boko Haram. All right. Jesus Christ, I think I'm catching my breath here. I think I'm catching my breath here, all right? Anyway, let's talk a little bit about the Boko Haram. The Boko Haram have killed 30 people in a mass shooting out there in uh uh, in, in Nigeria, you know, once again, the freaking Boko Haram, they're at it again. And God damn it, these guys are some savage scumbags, you know that? I mean, I don't understand how in the blue hell you're going to sit over here and call yourself uh, a freedom fighter for Islam or something, you know what I mean? I don't understand how you can sit over here and claim that you're going to do all these goddamn terrorist acts for Islam, and you're killing your fellow Muslims in Nigeria. It makes no freaking sense there, the Boko Haram. It makes no freaking sense. 
But once again, it goes to show you how far this Islamic extremism is going, all right? I mean, it's been over a 1,000 people dead uh, since, Jesus Christ, November, this past November. Over a 1,000 people dead in Nigeria, courtesy of the Boko Haram. I'm not joking. This is a sick brand of Islamic extremism, for Christ's sake. I mean, it's a joke. It really is. It's, it's an utter joke. Jesus Christ, my chest is hurting, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. Anyway, once again, the Boko Haram, all right, this sick, disgusting variant of Islamic extremism is out there killing its own Muslims once again in Nigeria, 30 dead. Jesus Christ, my chest. <coughs> 30. <coughs> 30 dead, for Christ's sake, in Nigeria because of the Boko Haram, for Christ's sake. You can't believe this? 30 dead in Nigeria. I can't believe this crap. I mean, it doesn't look like the Boko Haram is going to stop anytime soon. Jesus Christ, it doesn't, it's not going to stop anytime soon. And you know who else is not going to stop anytime soon? These damn scumbag international bureaucratic consortiums that want to continue to infringe upon our Internet freedom, for Christ's sake. That's what's not going to end. What's not going to end is all the bureaucrats that want to take control of the Internet and utilize it for its own big brother unscrupulous purposes, for Christ's sake. That's what's never going to end. Did you hear about this coming out of the United Nations? Did you all hear about this? The United Nations, believe it or not, wants to control the Internet. All right? That's right. The United Nations wants to now control the Internet. And believe it or not, Russia and China and all the totalitarian nation states are all for this. They're the ones initiating this. Uh, little resolution to the United Nations. Can you believe this crap? Russia, China, and their allies within the 193 members of the uh, states of the uh, ITU, and of course if you folks don't know what the hell the IE2, ITU is, excuse me, it is the International Telecommunication Union, which is a treaty-based organization under the United Nations, all right? And what these countries are proposing is that the United Nations become the overlord of the Internet. And let me tell you what this resolution has in it as far as the United Nations' powers over the Internet, all right? All right? And it's pretty chilling, to say the least, all right? All right? The international law that is going to be, you know, put into effect, or at least they're going to try to put it into effect by next December, subjects cybersecurity and data privacy to international control, allows foreign phone companies to charge fees for international Internet traffic. Did y'all hear this? Huh? Did y'all hear this for Christ's sake? allows foreign phone companies to charge fees for international Internet traffic, perhaps even a paperclip basis for certain web destinations, with the goal of generating revenue for state-owned phone companies and government treasuries. Can, you, I'm not joking. This is an actual proposal for the United Nations, for Christ's sake. Can you believe this crap? Jesus Christ. Can we go on? They want, to impro they want to impose unprecedented economic regulations such as mandates for rates, terms and conditions for currently unregulated traffic, swapping agreements known as peering. Yeah. They want to, you know, set unprecedented economic re regulations and mandates for this stuff. Can you believe this? I mean, this is not a joke. And it continues on. It continues on, for Christ's sake. It wants to establish for the first time for the UT for the ITU, excuse me, 
established for the first time the ITU dominion over important functions of multi-stakeholder internet governance aid entities, such as the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, the nonprofit entity that coordinates the .com and the .org web addresses of the world. Yeah. I mean, the freaking United Nations wants to take control of who gets .coms and who gets .orgs. I mean, can you believe this crap? And that's not all. All right? Subsume under government, intergovernment, excuse me, let me repeat that again. Subsume under intergovernment control many functions of the Internet Engineering Task Force, the Internet Society, and other multi-stakeholder groups that establish the engineering and technical standards that allow the Internet to work. Yeah. They want to take over the mainframes, too. Can you believe the United Nations? They want to take over the mainframes, too. And last but not least, they want to regulate international and mobile roaming rates and practices. Huh? Isn't this great? Oh, my God, this is just disgusting is what it is. I mean, is this what we enacted the United Nations for? Uh, I mean, is this why our governments are involved with this disgusting international bureaucracy so they can impose totalitarian garbage like this? I mean, I can't believe this crap, that the United Nations actually has the audacity to sit over here and do this. But I'll tell you this. We're not going to stand for it. And who are we? Who are we? I'm talking about the capitalist army! I'm talking about the capitalist army! I'm talking about the goddamn capitalist army! Goddamn it! We're not going to take any kind of regulation on our internets. No kind of internet regulation by any kind of international bureaucratic institution. No type of internet regulation by any kind of nation state institution. No type of internet regulation by any non government institution. No type of internet regulation, period. Do you understand that? Period. We don't want any regulation on the Internet. Do you want to know why? Because the, the, the Internet has brought us all closer together as nation states, you know, as citizens of nation states. We've gotten to know each other as a little bit more of a closer, tight niche community. Communication and the freedom of communication has brought countries and ideas closer together. Moreover, the freedom of information. I mean, you have to understand what type of power that is. The ability to be able to look up whatever it is that you don't know. I mean, do you understand that back in the Dark Ages, when they were depriving knowledge from these damn barbarians that overran the Roman Empire, that they were hoarding knowledge? They were hoarding knowledge, for Christ's sake. I mean, is that the road that we want to go into with this regulation of the Internet? Do we want to go through another dark ages where human potential and the human intellectual capacity will be stagnated because of some goddamn international bureaucratic institution wanting to control the Internet? Absolutely not. We can't allow this. Because you have to understand, the Internet is the last bastion of freedom for a lot of folks out here in the international community. Some people are on the Internet expressing themselves that can't express themselves in their reality because they'd be oppressed by their governments. The Internet is the last freedom of expression, the last freedom of creativity, the last freedom of communication. And we, as the citizens of the Internet, cannot allow any kind of regulation on the Internet. And that's what the capitalist army's main objective is all about. We want no Internet regulation, period. And I don't care if the United Nations wants to sit over here and internationalize and take over as some goddamn international bureaucratic power over the Internets. All right? They have no right. They have no right, for Christ's sake. 
Anyway, I want to hear from you. Uh, I know that we're running late here, but this is a very serious subject matter. I want to hear what you have to say about the United Nations wanting to regulate the Internet under this new goddamn treaty, under this new goddamn agreement that they're trying to push forth through the International Telecommunication Union, which is nothing more than an offshoot of the U.N. What do you have to say about it? 646-652-4869. The United Nations wants to regulate the Internet, for Christ's sake. Eric Cole 314 you're on yes. the horn. Fictional big and little for four. Ted Cassidy played this t- Jesus Christ, can you shove it up your ass with the goddamn Jeopardy questions? 234, what do you think about the UN regulating the, the internet? Son of a bitch. I hope you get cancer of the anal passage. 508, what do you think about uh, internet regulation in the United Nations? <laughs> Son of a bitch. 717, what do you think about internet regulation? Well, first, I had two things to say. First off, happy birthday to Exara Hawks. And second off, anyone that wants to really control the internet are a bunch of fucking idiots. Well, what do you think about the United Nations, man? They're serious about this, man. I mean, did you hear about these provisions? I mean, they, they want to allow foreign phone companies to charge fees for international internet traffic. Can you believe that? Shit. This is a lot of shit. I mean, this is what the United Nations is proposing. And I'm sitting over here talking about it, and you hear these idiots prank calling me up like it's a big freaking joke. I mean, yeah, sooner or later, you're going to have to be charged if the U.N. has its way to even visit a website in another country. I mean, really, look at Lamar Smith. We already bash him. Basically, half the big website shut down the Internet for a day. We don't want this. Stop proposing it. I know, I, and I hear you there, 717. I want to thank you for calling up. Stop it is right. Stop this incremental Internet regulation. We don't want it. And you know who does want it? It's all the totalitarian nation states. I mean, take a look at the people that are leading the fight in the United Nations to implement this thing. It's Russia and China. They're afraid that the Internet will jeopardize their particular little pissing ground of social order, for Christ's sake. It's stupid. I can't believe the U.N. is sitting over here trying to implement Internet regulation. I can't believe that crap. Jesus Christ. Anyway, we got to move on here, folks. We're running out of time. Once again, the United Nations wants to regulate the Internet under the International Telecommunications Union. And, of course, China and Russia are leading that so that they can go out and continue to become totalitarian, disgusting, pathetic systems that oppress their people. All right? And speaking of freaking Russia, uh, you know that you've been, we've been seeing a lot of uprisings, a lot of protests out there in Russia against old Vladimir Putipoo. We talked about yesterday how the uh, Russian president, uh, Medvedev actually met with the Russian opposition that have been protesting out there in the streets actually met with Russian opposition leaders. Well, just to solidify somewhat of a win in next March's election for Pootipoo, Pootipoo has promised an increase in policemen's salaries in Russia right before the election. Oh, he's playing Obama politics. Oh, isn't that great? He's playing Obama politics. Yeah, baby, I, I promise, baby, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to give you a raise in your food call, baby, you elect me, baby. I'm going to give you a raise in your housing voucher program, and you elect me, baby. Uh, you understand, I'll make sure there's a Cadillac in every driveway, baby. You understand that? That's what I'm talking about, baby. I mean, can you believe old Pooty Poo over here? This guy actually has the audacity to pull a page out of the Barack Obama political playbook. I mean, this is just a disgrace. This is an utter disgrace. And and let me tell you something. For all those that are in opposition, that are in Russia, all right, all I got to say is, come on, Russia, come on and raise up. Take your shirt off, throw it around your head like a helicopter. Raise up, baby, raise up. We don't need no goddamn pooty poo in office for Christ's sake, this ex KGB commie bastard. Get him out of there, Russia. Put down the vodka and get him out of there. Get him out. 
Anyway, that that's about enough. Let's move on to, you know, lighter subject matters. Well, somewhat lighter. Did anybody hear about old Tommy Jordan, the scumbag that shot his daughter's laptop, thought he was some kind of Billy Badass uh, paladin cowboy or something, because he posted the damn thing on freaking YouTube and completely humiliated his daughter? Y'all remember this son of a bitch? He got over 27 million hits for his stupid little video. You know who I'm talking about, all right? Well, this son of a bitch is back. Believe it or not, he is back, and... This guy had the audacity to put on another video, and believe it or not, conveniently is a partner now. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. Conveniently, he's throwing ads on his video. This guy actually thinks he can cash in on this crap, which is unbelievably disgusting. All right? But this guy put out a video trying to call out Dr. Phil. Can you believe this crap? Oh, yeah. Attention whoring much, Tommy? Huh? Attention whoring much? I mean, Jesus Christ, I'm sick and tired of seeing this scumbag, for Christ's sake. Have you seen this? If you haven't seen it, it's some five-foot-two, uh, shit-kicking hick, thinks he's some kind of cowboy jerk-off, wearing a damn cowboy hat, pissing and moaning about how his daughter's not respecting him because she doesn't fetch him coffee and ain't going out and getting a job at 15, for Christ's sake. And because, uh, you know, he found some private entry in her Facebook account that he was snooping around in that stated that, I don't like my dad. He's a piece of crap. And he found it and was a little upset about it. He decided to post some garbage on YouTube, uh, basically uh, bad-mouthing his daughter and making his daughter out to be some piece of trash. And then at the end of the freaking video, he shoots the daughter's freaking notebook, for Christ's sake. I mean, what a joke. You know what I mean? This guy, Tommy Jordan, is an utter joke, and I can't believe that there are parents out there actually clapping for this stupid, dumb son of a bitch. I mean, who in the hell thinks that intimidating your children with guns is a good idea or can even equate it to good parenting, for Christ's sake? This guy is an utter scumbag, all right? Stupid, dumbass Tommy Jordan, for Christ's sake. Let me tell you something right now. I, I, I hope that all this freaking fame that this idiot is hopping on the bandwagon to, I hope it, it bites him right in his ass. I hope he loses all his clients and his goddamn stupid little pissing ground little IT business that he's got going on. All right? I hope that he just has nothing but bad freaking luck. All right? You don't intimidate your children by, first of all, humiliating them to a world audience, and secondly, intimidate them with guns. All right? I don't give a shit what your excuse is. You don't intimidate your children by shooting something that belongs to them. I mean, how would you interpret that, man? How would you interpret that if I took something of yours right now, whoever the hell you are, I took something of yours put it on YouTube, and shot it. What the hell would you think? You would be a little intimidated. It would be a threat. You would intimidate that. Uh, you, you would consider that a threat. So anyway, you know, fuck you, Tommy Jordan, you piece of garbage. You're, you're a bad parent. You're a disgusting piece of trash. And let me tell you, I would do anything to get five minutes alone with your little stupid five foot two, a buck ten, soaking wet, little stupid shit kicking hick ass. Do you understand that, boy? I know you ain't from Texas. I know for a fact you ain't from Texas. Well, by God, Tommy Jordan, if you're from Texas, I'd like for you and I to meet mano a mano so I can bitch slap you into submission and teach you how to be a real freaking parent to your children. All right? You stupid sack of crap. Maybe the fact that you're no longer with her mother anymore may have something to do with a little bit of the resentment the daughter feels, all right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe that you, that new bimbo that you've got walking around your house there, Tommy, is, uh, you know, kind of shaking her ass and trying to think she's king bitch of the house out here, making your daughter feel like a piece of crap. And maybe that's why she's a little upset there, Tommy. You stupid son of a bitch. Anyway, Tommy Jordan, you're a piece of crap. If you're listening, 
I, I would like five minutes alone with your sorry sack of crap ass. And, and you know what? Don't bring your guns, boy. Don't bring your guns. Just bring your fists, mano y mano, baby. You understand? And I will be more than happy uh, to implement some disciplinary action on your ass to show you what a real man is all about, boy. Do you understand that? All right, what a real man is. A real man don't need no goddamn gun to intimidate their kid, boy. Do you understand that? A real man don't need no goddamn gun to intimidate his kid. So let me tell you, I'd like to meet you, Tommy Jordan. You and me, mano a mano, and I want to... I literally want to beat the living be Jesus out of you. All right, because I, I don't like people who intimidate their children with freaking guns. All right, uh, I'm serious. I, I don't want some idiot out there that's looking at you, observing you, shooting your daughter's goddamn laptop, and think that's a good idea because it's not. Jesus Christ. Anyway, let me move on for Christ's sake. I want to talk a little bit about Jeremy Lin for Christ's sake. Leave Jeremy Lin alone, okay? Let the Asians milk this for all it's worth for Christ's sake. I mean, when was the last time you saw a cool Asian, man? Stop being racist to freaking J Jeremy Lin. Stop being racist, man. Did you hear the ESPN uh, website editor? And the disgusting racial slurs that he used in describing the game, for Christ's sake. I kid you not. I mean, he had a picture of Jeremy Lin, and under the picture it had a freaking title caption, Chink in the Armor. I kid you not. This is ESPN right here, Chink in the Armor, all right? I, I think I saw another one that, you know, he slants too much to the right, you know. Oh, he slants too much. I mean, come on! Jesus Christ, that he missed a pass, that he must have been blindfolded with dental floss. I mean, give me a break. Come on. Jesus Christ, man. Leave Jeremy Lin alone. Leave him alone, all right? The man's a good kid, all right? He graduated from Harvard, all right? Unlike those other stupid dumb jocks that go four years to a freaking college institution because of their balling skills, and they go get an underwater basket-weaving degree, for Christ's sake, all right? He's a good kid. Leave him alone, all right? Stop being racist, you racist pricks. Jesus Christ. You know what? For all you racist assholes, especially you jerks in New York that are being racist to old Jeremy Lin, all right? I hope they stop serving kosher hot dogs to you sons of bitches in Madison Square Garden, and I hope that you're forced to eat fried rice, you prick! I hope they shove egg rolls down your throats for being so freaking racist. Freaking chink in the armor. What a joke, man. What, a, what, a, what an utter piece of crap. Anyway, leave Jeremy Lin alone. And last but not least, folks... I want to address the Capitalist Army's anti-Lamar Smith campaign. It is going very well, for Christ's sake. All you've got to do is do a YouTube search for Capitalist Army Lamar Smith and take a look at all the anti-Lamar Smith videos that are out there. But let me tell you something. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. We need to keep the videos coming. We need to keep the images coming. All right? And moreover... We need to make sure that everybody is well aware of Lamar Smith's totalitarian tactics. Now, why are we focusing in on Lamar Smith? Because this man was the author of SOPA, and now this man is the author of the newly initiated H.R. 1981, which is a disgusting, despicable law that makes SOPA look like a freaking day in the park. All right? Look like a day in the park, for Christ's sake. So what we plan to do as the capitalist army, we plan to become an actual hurdle in Lamar Smith's quest for re-election. And that's right, he is running for re-election in 2012. And believe it or not, the Republican primary is coming up this April. 
Now, we out here in Texas, for some reason, this Texas uh, Republican-dominated legislature actually redistrict the whole goddamn state. And believe it or not, we have people having very serious problems with that redistricting. And they're alleging alleged racism in that redistricting, and they have taken it to court, and that court case has gone all the way to the Supreme Court. All right? So what does that mean? That means that the primary, which is supposed to be held in April for Texas, may be extended into May or June. So that means that we have plenty of time to make sure that the capitalist army's voices are heard against Lamar Smith. And I'm putting all politicians on notice that if any one of you attempt to regulate the Internet, And if any one of you attempt to implement totalitarian laws, we will make sure that we throw all kinds of videos showing how disgusting and sleazy and slimy your totalitarian asses are. We're going to throw images and blog posts and comment posts all over the Internet. We're going to call into right-wing radio shows and left-wing radio shows. And we're going to make sure that they remember your totalitarian asses. Because we're the capitalist army. And we're not going to just sit around and watch totalitarianism be shoved down our throats with just us going quietly in the good night. We are not going quietly. And by God, I am calling on the capitalist army to continue with their videos on Lamar Smith. Continue with their images and their blog posts and their comment posts and their calls to conservative radio shows and liberal radio shows. We got to make sure that Lamar Smith is unelected and we got to make sure that we, the people of the internet, have something to do about it. Because you got to imagine if we have something to do about the campaign of Lamar Smith. We will be setting political history. We will be setting political history by allowing the Internet to actually affect a campaign. And that's why I'm calling on all of you. All you've got to do is make a freaking video. Make an image. All right? Make something. Go out there and do something, for Christ's sake. This is the man that authored SOPA. This is the man that is introducing H.R. 1981, for Christ's sake. If you don't know what it is, well, then look it up, you milky liquor. This is the man that signed the NDAA. And let me tell you something. The capitalist army, we are going to continue our video campaign, our image campaign, our Internet campaign against Lamar Smith. And uh, for all you folks that don't know, I have officially endorsed uh, Lamar Smith's opposition in the GOP, and I'm talking about Richard Mack. That's right, I'm talking about Sheriff Richard Mack, and for you folks that are completely unaware of this guy, I'd like for everybody to become aware of this guy, because if Sheriff Mack happens to win the primary this April, or whenever the hell it happens to be, Lamar Smith won't even have an opportunity to run for re-election. That's right. I'd like for everybody to please follow this man right now. Let me go ahead and post it on the screen. Lock down that chat room, engineer. Lock down that chat room. All right. It is Sheriff Mack, all right? S-H-E-R-I-F-F-M-A-C-K 2012 on Twitter, baby. There it is right there. Follow that man on Twitter, and what we're going to do is make sure that this guy wins the GOP nomination for District 21 in Texas, all right? Even if I have to get on the show and start calling people within that district and start freaking robo-calling those people myself, because by God, we got to make sure that Lamar Smith is not reelected in District 21. And we have to make sure that we become an actual factor in Lamar Smith's attempt at reelection so that we could show the system that the people of the Internet are not a bunch of disgusting, pathetic losers and actually 
are brilliant, smart, intelligent, technologically savvy people. And if you're going to implement Internet regulation on us, if you're going to implement totalitarianism on us, then we are not going to take that lightly. And that's all i got to say. Anyway, much props to the, to the capitalist army, all right? And I'm, I'm tipping my glass. Cheers! Cheers to the true capitalist army. <sighs> anyway, folks, please... Continue making videos. If you make a video, I will follow you on Twitter. Do you understand that? If you make an anti-Lamar Smith video representing the capitalist army, I will follow you on Twitter. So keep the damn freaking videos coming, for Christ's sake. As a matter of fact, where are the remixes? Where are the Lamar Smith remixes, for Christ's sake? That's what I'm waiting for. Anyway, keep them coming. And once again... Whoever is the best anti-Lamar Smith video, whoever is the best at the end of everything, I will allow you to be the co-host for two weeks straight, baby. Two freaking weeks straight, even if your personality sucks the chrome off of a 57 Chevy bumper, all right? All right, I will have you on here, and you will be the co-host for two weeks. Anyway, folks, now that we've gotten that out all out of the way, let's just go ahead and get into everybody's favorite part of the broadcast, and I'm talking about Radio Griffey! <laughs> That's right, folks. It's time for Radio Graffiti, where the spectators become a part of the spectacle. All you've got to do is give me a call right now, 646 646- 652-4869 is the number to call, and when I call on your area code or your Skype name, you will have exactly three to four seconds to say whatever, whatever you have to say that's on your mind. That's what Radio Graffiti is all about. And let me tell you, when I call on your Skype name or your area code, don't be a Helen Keller deaf mute, all right? Don't be a Helen Keller deaf mute and be prepared to what the hell you're going to say, you stupid scumbag. I'm sick and tired of calling on you people, and you don't even know what the hell to say. You're just stumbling and mumbling a goddamn sentence fragment. Know what the hell you're going to say. You got it? Jesus Christ. All right, let's go ahead. Do we have any callers, engineer? All right, let's go ahead and see what we got here. This is Radio Graffiti, and we're starting it right now. 502 Radio Graffiti. Oh, good dog, here I go. So it's a little concern you couldn't catch your breath. I thought you got the Zyklon B meant for... Shut up with a Zyklon B, you stupid moron. Uh, 936 Radio Graffiti. Uh, okay. Hey, Gus, it's your turn. Uh, choose your standard look. Yeah, we, we we can't even understand you because your phone sucks. Six oh seven radio graffiti. Hey, here we go with these assholes. The Helen Keller deaf mutes for Christ's sake. Eight one eight radio graffiti. Six oh three radio graffiti. So wait, ghost. When you say Sheriff Mac, do you mean Big Mac? Because I would definitely go for that guy. Oh Jesus Christ, that was lame. Are you kidding me? Oh, you're talking about Big Mac? I definitely vote for that guy. You sound like a freaking fat ham bone, you stupid, disgusting prick. All right, a five, six, seven, Radio Graffiti. This is Astro Ketchum, and my favorite type of Pokemon is Ghost-type Pokemon. You can guess why. <laughs> my dream is to catch all the Alabama Black Snake in the world. What the hell was that? What the hell was that about? Gee, did you hear that? What the hell was that about? Jesus Christ, 605, Radio Graffiti. I love Rainbow Dash, Sperm, Dumb Night, Runny Bastard. Shut up, shut up, I never said that, shut up. 518, Radio Graffiti. Hey man, already starting on the video, and long live the Capitalist Society. Hey man, thanks a lot man, it's a Capitalist Army, but, but still, it doesn't matter, thanks a lot man. 732, Radio Graffiti. Hey, uh, instead of, um... Iran enriching their uranium. They should enrich their dental hygiene. Yeah, I think they need to enrich their freaking showers, too, if you want my personal opinion. 914 Radio Graffiti. What's up? Uh, I don't know. Your ceiling? 860 Radio Graffiti. 
Se- uh, freaking 718, Radio Graffiti. 520, Radio Graffiti. 571, Radio Graffiti. Radio Graffiti. Oh. <laughs> what the hell? What, are you, what the hell? What are you, why did you add a laugh at the end of your freaking whiz, for Christ's sake, man? What the hell did you add my laugh? I'm not going to laugh at that, you stupid morons. Jesus Christ. Who the hell else do we got going on over here? Let's take some Let's take some more callers, huh? Uh, we got CB Fat Marshall, Radio Graffiti. I'm going back to Cali. 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 I'm going back to Cali. I don't think so. I'm going back to Cali. 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 I'm going back to Cali. I don't think so. I'm going back to Cali. 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 I'm going back to Cali. I don't think so. I'm going back to Cali. 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 I'm going back to Cali. I'm going back to Cali. Cali. Uh, you know, I actually like that song, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind that. I'm mean, going back to Cali, Cali, Cali. I'm going back to Cali. I, I don't like the freaking engineer in the background, though. What the hell is that about? It could have been, it could have been without the engineer. All right, all right. I'm the talent, asshole. I'm the talent, not the engineer. Get that straight. Son of a bitch. Who else do we got going on over here? Uh. Jesus Christ. We got uh, Texas Troll, Radio Graffiti. Hey, cum guzzler. Calling from Springfield. I got an 8-inch cock that's fat. That's it. Jesus Christ. Take that somewhere else, you sick, fruity bastard. God damn. 817, Radio Graffiti. Now here's another Helen Keller deaf mute. 607, Radio Graffiti. When I look up into the dictionary, I see a picture. Uh, we we can't even understand you because you sound like a goddamn child molester. Two uh, five oh three radio graffiti. Gosh dang it, Goatler! Why are you trying to reform the Nazis? Shut up, you stupid moron, and stop calling me Ghostler, you stupid over feminized fruit. Jesus Christ, you sound like freaking RuPaul after getting their balls ripped off. Seven two zero radio graffiti. You should come to our group poop over at Sugar Cube Corner. Yeah, we really need a party pooper. Jesus Christ, with these freaking bronies, for Christ's sake. Enough of the freaking bronies, all right? Enough. Freaking talking horses, for Christ's sake. 212, Radio Graffiti. Graffiti. Shut that down, for Christ's sake, all right? 570, Radio Graffiti. Nokia-looking piece of crap. 314, Radio Graffiti. Stupid idiot. 234, Radio Graffiti. I, the great and powerful Trixie, do not care what topic you have at hand. I only wish to talk about myself. And I did vanquish an Ursa Major, you know. Jesus Christ, man, what the hell is this crap? I'm getting infested by bronies for Christ's sake. Enough of you talking, horsing, clopping pieces of crap. Stop ruining my Taco Tuesday. Stop ruining it. Jesus Christ. Give me a freaking shot here, man. Goddamn mic, for Christ's sake. God damn it. 201 Radio Graffiti. Hello, Ghost. Yeah. Does your loud and manly voice compensate for your small dick? Oh, uh, yeah. You, you you can only wish you could get a view of the old Ghost special, don't you there, Fruit Bowl, huh? Uh, that's why the old Ghost special is on your mind, for Christ's sake, the old 15 and a half, huh? You stupid son of a bitch. Just sit there and shut up and keep dreaming, you little twerp. 559 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, I've always wondered, how do you understand what the engineer is saying? Hey, 
don't worry about what the engineer's saying, all right? He doesn't need to. You don't need to worry about what he's saying. Only I need to worry about what he's saying, all right? You need to worry. You people out there need to worry about what I'm saying, because I'm the talent. Me, you stupid moron. I mean, the, the engineer will agree with you. Am I the talent? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So don't sit over here and give me this crap. Two four eight radio graffiti. Oh, uh, goes to the Sharia law capitalist. Long live nine eleven. It was so hilarious. <laughs> Hey, how about if I give out your number and maybe somebody will give you a call and you know talk to you about it? Goodbye, bitch. Uh two four eight six nine seven. Huh? Oh, oh, well, come on! Oh, come on! Oh, oh, come on! You thought you were big and bad there for a second. Let's give him a call. Call him back, engineer. All right? Give him a call back. Well, just go ahead and call him, all right? I'm not going to sit over here and allow this son of a bitch to just call up and think it's a real big joke to just kind of pull something like that. Get, 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 me on, get him on the phone! Get him on the phone! Sorry, sack of crap. Man, this guy's not even answering his phone, for Christ's sake. He's not even answering. He took it off the hook. Look at him. Look at him! What a piece of crap. Stupid idiot. Well, well, I mean, I, I can't believe this guy. 6612, I can't believe it. Anyway, uh, 773, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Just want to say, uh, you have a really awesome show. Today was great. And uh, how the hell did you figure out, I mean, how do you know about underwater basket weaving? Did you go to... Well, don't worry about it, all right? 204, Radio Graffiti. <laughs> Uh yeah, I just ate, I just killed. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, guys. You know, pants. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we know. Four eight five seven. We know. All right. Uh, four six nine. Radio graffiti. I'm really enjoying True Nationalist Radio. See how it goes. So keep it up. Uh, asshole! It's True Capitalist. It's True Capitalist Radio. You stupid moron. Who else? We got five seven three. You're on the horn. Radio graffiti. <coughs> Man, we don't want to hear you fapping, you moron. 224, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, we just want to, I just want to let you know that uh, the Capitalist Army wants to see you on Steam sometime. Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to try. If, if I can find enough time in the day to start gaming, well, then maybe I'll go ahead and try, man. I'll definitely try. 307, Radio Graffiti. Oh, uh, 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 that's me. That's, that's. Stumbling, mumbling, little jerk. 702, Radio Graffiti. I, I, can't, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You're in the crapper. I can't hear you. 989, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost! What? Well, that's it? Come on, you could have yelled something else there, Milky Liquor. 631, Radio Graffiti. Take that commie crap off, you stupid moron. Shut up. 204, Radio Graffiti. Fuck these Jews. Fuck them all. Seriously. What the I mean, hell is your problem? Why, why, why are you upset about the Jews? Jews.com, man. Fuck them. Zap is God. Cap's a little bitch. Fuck them. Who? What, 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 Zap yeah. is God? Who the hell are you talking about? No, Cap's a little bitch. Zap is God. Now shut up, you stupid moron. You're some schizophrenic freak. 831, Radio Graffiti. Shove it up your ass. Jimmy Kudos, Radio Graffiti. I am not a Jew, all right? I am not a Jew. God damn it, I am not a Jew. Good Lord. I am not a Jew. Son of a bitch. I am not a Jew. For Christ's sake. I am not a Jew. I'm a capitalist. Jesus Christ, all right? I don't like matzo, all right? Let the freaking bread rise, all right? Let the bread rise. Jesus Christ. Not only that, I use yarmulkes for coffee filters, all right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. I would I would be upset about it. Don't get me wrong. I would be upset about it. 
but that guy had just called about Jews, and, you know, he was trying to correlate with me with being a Jew, and uh, then Jimmy Kudos comes in with the I'm Not a Jew remix, so it just kind of coincided, it just, it just kind of rang together, for Christ's sake. Anyway, 678 Radio Graffiti. I hate niggers. Well, it sounds like you hate girls from that voice, too. How about 402 Radio Graffiti? Oh, God, this is a fire! Oh! What the hell? What the hell was that about, for Christ's sake? 901 Radio Graffiti. Tuesday. Okay. How about uh, five six seven radio graffiti? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you took too long. Uh, Eight one five radio graffiti. Ghost. Yeah, Ghost. Well, you took, yeah, you took too long. How about five one three radio graffiti? Hey guys, I just want to say I'm really enjoying a uh, true communist radio. Uh, keep it up. Yeah, shove it up your ass. All right. Well, why are you talking all low, huh? Uh, you grounded from the computer. Don't want mommy to come in and give you a few smacks to the mouth. Four four three radio graffiti. Jesus Christ, Permantine! Can we get a major fail on that stupid asshole, please? Shut up! Shut up, you moron! Four seven nine radio graffiti. I'm in love with the engineer, even though ghost sucks. And now I- shut up, you stupid broad. All right. Keep your clitoris in your pants and shut up. 478 Radio Graffiti. God damn it. Ghost, baby, I got my Lamar Smith video up, and I expect to follow up on Twitter by the time I get home, baby. What are you talking about? You didn't even represent the capitalist army. You were representing your own self. What are you talking about, follow you? It says capitalist army in the title, baby. It says ghetto capitalist army. It doesn't say capitalist army. You're correlating it with yourself. I mean, you think I want to be affiliated with somebody who's ghetto who uh, goes out there with Pookie and be smoking crack rock? I mean, freaking going out there getting free goddamn student grants and, and, and coinciding that with freaking goddamn welfare? Do you think I want to be affiliated with that ghetto capitalist? Maybe capitalism's capitalism, no matter, no matter how you slice it, ghost. No, nah, yeah, shove here. it up your head. Give me a freaking goddamn... And great, my goddamn microphone is going out. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Jesus Christ, man. I freaking shoot pearls. I come in here every goddamn day and do a show, for Christ's sake. And this is how you repay me, man. All of you people. Jesus Christ, it makes me sick. Jesus Christ. Now, you know what? I'm glad it's going out of freaking batteries. You understand that? I'm glad it is because you people have ruined my Taco Tuesday. You've ruined it. You've ruined my Taco Tuesday. Each and every one of you, for Christ's sake. You people will be lucky if I come back on here for tomorrow's show. You will be lucky if I come back here for another show tomorrow, for Christ's sake. You piece of crap. As a matter of fact, implement chat room martial law, engineer. Implement chat room martial law. You've been listening to True Capitalist Radio. The thoughts, views, ideas, comments, and opinions of the host of this show are absolutely his. Catch more live episodes Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30 Central. Or check out archive shows at blogtalkradio.com. True Capitalist Radio. That's it. Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast. Coated in our signature teriyaki glaze. Where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet. For a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. The bold flavor of Japan. Now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere.